the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Sisters, I'm Elder Ricard Shiar of the Gathering of Christ Church here with our weekly broadcast. Hope you all are doing fine. It's good to uh, see so many familiar faces here with us. Our brothers and sisters, I see Evie Law and uh, 
Okay, we have Lufia Muhammad. How are you? I would say uh, in the Arabic, Assalamu alaikum, but no, we're Hebrews, we're Israelites. Shalom. <laughs> and we'll give you more insight to why we'll, we more so lean towards our forefathers' language when it comes to greetings. How are you doing, Topeka? I see you all the time and all the regulars. I hope you are blessed by the best like I am. And of course, his name is Ahaya. Thanks again for being a part of our weekly broadcast. And as you can see, yes, brothers and sisters, we have a doozy for you this evening. Christ is the truth. And Christianity is the lie. <laughs> now, before you, brothers and sisters who are Christians who never ran into this information before, we're not talking personally about your devotion or your devout walk with Christ. OK, and in, in your in, in the spiritual walk and seeking the most high God and following the principles of Christ. It has nothing to do with individual Christians. So don't be offended. Give us an opportunity to explain the title. OK. Christ is the truth. The institution of Christianity is the lie. <laughs> and yes, 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 we have a lot to unpack. Because I believe and I, I wholeheartedly Christ tells us. Christianity, the institution, has been really the most the most damning weapon used in earth as a divisive tool to keep those who believe in Christ apart. And it also have done damage. It, it, it's done irreparable damage when it comes to people in general, Israelites in general, our people in the communities as general. In general, uh, losing faith by equating the Bible with what we've witnessed within the institution of Christianity. Right now, before I go into what led me to this topic this evening, brothers and sisters, first and foremost, for you coming in, thank you for hitting the like button. I'd like to thank you for all the support you've always uh, ha I mean, the support you've always given the gathering of Christ church, it's without question. And, and, you know, and I really want to show my gratitude and say, thank you first and foremost for you being here for us first in prayer and being able to spread the word and share it with others and all the support you've always done in the Academy, especially you loyal, uh, brothers and sisters out there who are with us at every turn, be it here on the broadcast, the Sabbaths, and even the Hebrew and Bible Academy. And I'm going to talk about that in one moment. First of all, I like to give my gratitude and say thank you. A lot of what we do behind, behind here, behind this camera, cannot, cannot, you know, be, you know, realized without your support. So I need you to know that, that I don't think, I didn't forget about my, brothers and sisters out there who, even though you're on the other side, which you contributing and helping this work, you are in the work. You are contributing, you are helping. So I'd like to say thank you first and foremost for that. What drove me to this topic today, Elder Lloyd, and I'm going to talk about it and I'm, I have it all lined up with bullet points. A brother by the name, uh, let's get my phone here because I don't want to get his name incorrect. I do not want to mispronounce his name. A brother by the name of Russell called me from Baltimore today while I was doing chores and all those things getting prepared for tonight. And Elder Lawyer, let me put you in Elder Lawyer real quick before I do the announcements. Elder Lawyer. This brother, yes, sir. this brother called and asked, how can he contact the church? How can he be a part of the church in Baltimore? Of course, I relayed his details to Elder Gabar, who's going to reach out to the brother. But it's this brother who actually spurned, who's, who've actually 
uh, I would say inspired. That's the word. This particular broadcast tonight. All right. Mm. As you can see, I got the Vatican in the midst of us. All right. Scarlet purple. Scarlet red and purple. I have that here in the midst of us for a reason. This brother said he ran into uh, our video on zombies. What are they turning us into? That's why you never know what video is going to uh, draw interest to those who would never fall on our videos otherwise. Believing that, okay, I see these guys sometime, they wear the head wrap and, you know, I've heard them before on, you know, probably confusing us with Israelites believing that all that Israelites is a monolith, that all Israelites believe the same thing, being ignorant to the right. fact, elder lawyer, that Christ himself was an Israelite who was against the Pharisee doctrine. Right. But in a hmm. nutshell, the brother wanted to speak to me and I spoke to him while I was doing a few chores. And he said in particular, elder lawyer, I fell on that zombie video and what they turning us into. And he says, really, now that I've listened to you and you can tell this brother was a devout Christian. He says, since I seen that video, I haven't been able to operate for the last three months without binging on the videos I've seen through the gathering of Christ church. He was a brother, a Christian. Mm -hmm. He said, but what he found out by listening to our videos is that really in a nutshell, there was a bait and switch. The brother was able to articulate himself and explain himself to understand that Christianity as an institution is an enemy, not to our people, but to all people. Why? Because there's a confusing factor and people are coming into Christian churches confused, looking for a path or a way only to get further confused. And it wasn't mm. until him running into our teachings that he was able to resolve it, to know the full narrative and plan concerning his life in the Bible. And I was like, whoa, brother, you don't even know he really inspired me to talk about this leading to our Hebrew and Bible Academy, modern day Christianity. I'm going to go into that lawyer. We're going to go into that and tackle that like never before modern day Christianity. The, and we, and guess what? We're not even going to go into it from what you would call an offensive standpoint or a bashing Christian standpoint. We're going right. to deal with it from the institution, the helm, right? The real, the real spirit behind Christianity that we see today, it has nothing to do with Christ. So Christ is the truth and it's Christianity, the institution that's a lie that I'm going to talk about, right? And there's books. Yeah. Yes. We're going to talk about this. One book that I'm going to actually take excerpts from. Uh, Frederick Martel in the closet of the Vatican power. Sexual homosexuality and hypocrisy. The Roman Catholic Church. The Roman and the reason why our people get confused looking for Christ going to the churches. I'm going to tell you why brothers and sisters are so confused. Really, in a nutshell, how often do you hear in any Christian church, elder lawyer, a moral standard for all Christians? What's the moral standard? Right. What sins am I committed against God according to the Bible? Well, we're going to find out that. It's purposely taught that only that people just have to confess that he's Lord without addressing the damning, the damnable, the damnable sin that we walk into church with. The absolving of the conscience, even though 
that person hasn't truly changed, not knowing exactly what sins they are committing against the God in the Bible. They did that on purpose. The Christian church, when it comes, comes to absolving sins and absolution, forgiveness of sins, Catholic church, where you can come and confess before the father and he says, okay, your sins are absolved. Go about your life like it ain't nothing. Well, they have incorporated that in our Christian church by saying, just confess that he's Lord and you're saved without having no knowledge, according to the Bible, what sins you're currently committing. And folks, I'm going to show you what they've used, but I'm going to, I'm going to more on that in the Academy. All right. Also in the closet, in the closet of the Vatican, power, homosexuality, and hypocrisy. What you don't realize brothers and sisters, is the politics that come that that came with what we call modern day Christianity? How many people were what assassinated for the throne of the papacy? How much lying, cutthroat, all that just to gain a throne, a father on earth that would bring forth a damning doctrine that would eventually, thousands of years later, be aimed towards us to do what? to compromise the morality of God's people in servitude. They would formulate a new doctrine that would absolve sins in our mind to make us believe we are accepted by God in the conscience while still sinning against the God or Christ one claims to serve. I'm going to be talking about that also in the Academy which starts this coming Sunday, folks. I'm going to be going into the Septuagint, the 1951 translation of the Septuagint, so that brothers and sisters in the Old Testament can understand how to use this book as a powerful tool to clear up what you may not understand reading the King James Version Bible. I'm going there this coming Sunday. And, it, and not only will it clear up things for Christians, it'll also let, let me get rid of these devils right here. Not only will it clear up things for Christians, it'll also clear up false doctrine that you hear even amongst Israelites. We're in their minds like the brother who called in and I'm going, AC, I need you to cut that clip last week, last Wednesday of the brother coming in who was confused concerning the future of Edomites. The future of Edomites, and I need you to put it in quotations, not in quotations, in brackets. Okay? Europeans. And I need you to take that phone call and make that a what? A clip in of itself and, and put, put it up on this channel by tomorrow, if you can do that AC. Because the brother was confused because he's thinking and teaching falsely that all white people are going to be destroyed. And he's using the book of Obadiah, the book of Malachi, out of context when it says there shall be none remaining of what? The house of Esau. And in their minds, none remaining, oh, they're going to disappear. No, it's talking about the property the Roman Catholic Church, the Romans, has ta taken. Their ill-gotten gains will be restored back to its original owner. It doesn't mean all white people are going to be killed. That's, 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 that's insane to even use the Bible for such, for such a stance. And that's that crazed theology that's out there that's giving Christ and those who believe in the Bible a bad name. Okay, Christ didn't tell Pontius Pilate, you're the devil that the Torah speaks of. Pilate looked at him and says, you, you almost compelled me to be Christian. The real Christianity before the Romans came. Right? So the Septuagint clears up a lot of uh, uh, 
a lot of false doctrine that's not just in Christianity, but amongst Israelites who would like to take scriptures out of context for their racial, for, you know, strictly for their personal racial beating stick against other people. So we're going to clear that up this Sunday by going into the Septuagint, showing brothers and sisters how to use this book to get the proper narrative in context according to the Bible. Okay. Now, Elder Lawyer. Oh, oh, hold yes, up, sir. Hold, hold up. Before you go, Elder Lawyer. Uh, what do we have here? Looky here. Looky here. And I think everyone need to have this book, The Talmud Unmasked. Yes, we're going to be going into the true teachings within Judaism in the academy. Whoa. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And when you go into purity and exile, it's going to, in this book, it actually tell you uh, how the journalist was coming amongst our people. Okay. The Tootsies, the Watus and the Tootsies. How politically a lot of our people in Africa knew they were Israelites and they used that massacre. The Rwanda massacre. Don't believe what you see in the movies. That was a lie to cover up the truth that they used that as a smoke screen to take, to actually get rid of political dissonance and those who were coming together, the intellects in Africa who was coming together between, uh, uh, um, uh, the Tootsies. I'm going to tell you right here, right, right here. When it's, when you, that movie, what was that movie? Uh, hotel Rwanda. The Y2 and the Tootsies are right here. It goes into how our people knew they were Israelites. And the, the it was a political thing and all that. And guess who was behind all of this? The same people we're talking about. What's the book? The Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. The Vatican. We're going to talk about that. You have the Hutu and, and, and the Tootsies, yeah. Right here. They, they was behind this. Now, more literature from a papyrus of the late Middle Kingdom in the Brooklyn Museum. And I'm going into this during the Hyksos time, uh, Elder Lawyer where it's what archeological proof that the Israelites were black in Egypt. Now, not just black. Let's just not make this a color thing. The history of the plagues was recorded from one of the Egyptians homes on papyrus to prove that what you got it. The plagues of Egypt was recorded and documented in Egypt. So what the historians did, the Greeks, Romans, along with the Egyptians under Manithos, changed the name of former kings, switched time periods, only, this is what they did, folks, only so that they can, what? totally erased the history of our people ever being there. They colluded together, the Egyptians, Manithos, the Romans and the Greeks, the Arabs were involved too, that they would distort history of our people being there and throw off the time periods according to Kings so that history could claim Israelites never existed in Egypt. They colluded so that our people in slavery today modern times would not be able to go back and relate our condition to our forefathers who served captivity in Egypt. <laughs> hey, we got this directly from the British museum. Archeological empirical proof that cannot be disputed. 
how they would formulate new history of Egypt only to only to to attempt to erase our history. Why? Because the Egyptians never gained power after the slaves were free. Same as America, the same as the Western world. Once we're free and Christ has come to make us free with the truth first. All empires who have, who have enslaved us like Egypt loses power. Oh yeah. This Academy lawyer will be the one. This will be the one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It will be the one. Hawaiian antiquities. We have three separate books. I'll be going into to prove not only the Hawaiians are Israelites, but the Polynesian, the Polynesians, those that the, the uh, indigenous people of New Zealand, the Fiji islands, all the way into Australia are different lost tribes of Israel. Hawaii are Naphtali and their forefathers knew it. They're not Asian. I'm going to prove that in the Academy. Hey, ha uh ha -huh. Jews in America. I got, I got four separate books. One from the 1800s. One from, I got one from the 1800s and I have two from the 1700s and one that was written in modern times by my, Ronald Sanders, a Jewish person lost tribes in the promised land. This brothers and sisters document back to the 1800s. Jews in America or probabilities. Ah. <laughs> with the removal of Rome, contrary reasonings, I mean, with the removal of some contrary reasonings, where they go into the book and admit that the North American Indians and the tribes that were here in America who were black before the $5 Indian were really from the lost tribes of Israel. Christopher Columbus didn't discover anything. He's a liar. He's a liar. And the people that sent him was the Roman empire. This is old. Look folks. I'm, this is the reprint of the original book in old Quaker English. Look at that. Look at that. I'm we dropping bombshells. <laughs> this Academy folks. Huh? What you want? what you want. And we're going to show you how to utilize the Bible along with the Apocrypha. The Catholic church, along with the Protestant church, once it was taken over by the Roman empire, coll colluded to take to take these books, 14 books out of the original 1611 King James version. Why? Because it shows the proof of all the conquering lands, all the people that the Roman Empire would come against were what? Were Israelites. Were Israelites. And Elder Lawyer, that leads me to our topic, and we're definitely going to open up the lines early. Because I want to hear, sure. I want to hear from the people. If you're an Israelite who feel that something is wrong with our doctrine and you're going to find it's Christ's doctrine, call up. This is where, listen, there will be no friction. There will be no uh, over talking. It's going to be the knowledge that will prevail. Bring forth your strong reasoning. And one thing about it, and... <laughs> that I'm fine with. I don't jump all over the place. If you have a point, you have to prove that point. And if you're questioning what we're teaching, you have to allow us to bring forth the strong reasoning without jumping someplace else. If you are a Christian and feel that what we're teaching is incorrect, tonight is your opportunity. We're opening up the lines early. But understand that we set the framework and parameters 
for the cause. So that so so that there's no what? So that there's no just dead air or people just talking with their feelings without edification. Christ was about edifying. At the end of his speech, everyone understood and context his purpose, his doctrine. The greatest gift is the edify and to not leave the people confused after listening. That means what? By edifying. When someone hear you teach, they must understand or know more now than they did before they heard you. That's edifying, right? That's, that's how you edify spiritually. All right. So understand if you come with a dispute, it's not to prove me wrong or me to prove you wrong. It's to edify it so that the people can have understanding regardless of either of us. So that the most high can be true. Every man a liar. Why? We're running out of time. And arguments never gotten anyone any place. I'm open for a dialogue, but I'm going to set the parameters. Why? Because you're on our program. Now, Elder Lawyer, these, the, hold on. One second, let me cut this off. Let me cut it off. All right, we opening up the calls tonight, especially going into the, this academy, folks. I was off two weeks. Man, I am so excited, chopping at the bit for what's going to come out this coming Sunday. Chopping at the bit. February 6th, this Sunday, historytimes.org with the creation of the universe. I'm going to tell you that right now. You don't want to miss it, okay? Historytimes.org. Let me show them that real quick before you read, Elder Lawyer. Historytimes.org. Just go there and enroll. It's very cheap. It's only 75 to get in. That'll cover the first month. 75 the second month and the third month you're in. Don't have to worry about it. Okay? You don't want to miss this academy. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to tell you straight out. Okay? We, we, we have brand new lessons. Uh, we're going to brand new in-depth lessons, finding the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is correct. The gates of hell showing portals on, on how angels interact with us. How they help us in the earth when our mother are, is impregnated. When they get impregnated, it be an angel of the presence there. And that same angel sees us out when Christ or the Most High calls our spirit before him. What, what this earth calls death. Death is a curse, folks. Our spirits are what? Immortal. Death is a curse. We were meant to live forever. I'm going to go into that. Israel's tribulation in the wilderness, a powerful lesson to show you once the world is done and eventually the Gentile empires are not going to be able to run with this truth out there like this. And they're going to what? They're going to leave us to our own devices and begin to let us go. I'm going to tell you that right now. Eventually, the, the Egypt, we became more of a cancer to Egypt than a benefit. So, the, so eventually, the Pharaoh had to let our people go. Folks, it's, gonna, it's already happening to some level. It's already happening, but they're doing it in a way in which what their corporations can survive. So they're saying either you do this or that, or you cannot work, which will leave us to our own devices. And they'll say, well, listen, if you're operating on the outside of society, you're going to die off anyway. But guess what? There's another chapter once we're moved out of the system. And I'm going to be talking about that with 
Israel's tribulation in the wilderness. Marriage and family, can it survive? Oh yeah, I'm going to be talking about that. Can it survive? And we're going to show you how the civil rights movement, brothers and sisters, the civil rights movement, listen to me clearly, under Martin Luther King, even Martin Luther King stated that he realized that he was duped at the end of his life before they killed him. Folks, the civil rights movement was only a bait and switch like the brother was mentioning. It had a back door to it. Because what? You cannot have a you can't have a movement without a morality standard with it. So eventually they knew that laws would be put on the books in which all the drags and the freaks of society will be put what? That's right. We'll, we'll be put in the basket with blacks. That was the whole point. To use civil rights as a backdoor, Christianity as a backdoor without a moral clause. To progress their system against the children of Israel. The Romans were behind that too. See, there was no more morality standard in the civil rights movement when it was a moral injustice done against the people. But we didn't come with moral standards so that we could do what? Close, to, close the door to those who would take advantage of the opportunity we were given as children of slaves with the civil rights movement. They left the back door in where now they can come with minority, any religion, white women. Only thing they had to do under minority and feminism was to make white women and minority. So I know they're telling you that they're saying that a, min a minority is, uh, 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 that black women are the minority. No, they say women. So they use civil rights as a backdoor. A Christian movement led by a Christian pastor to put all the freaks, drags, and those misfits in the basket with our people to lead the movement at the end of it and leave the people who died and was hung and enslaved in America at the back of the line. We're going to be talking about that, how Christianity was used for that. And more. So get it, get it right into it. Elder lawyer, right into it. The questions I have out there, and maybe you can answer this right out, Elder Lawyer. And we're going to keep it within these boundaries here that's set. Because of a Christian, he a Christian can't come in and argue exegesis and doctrine to me, according to how he was taught in the Christian church. Right? Because my question to Christians outright, according to the Bible, what are the moral standards within Christianity? What are the consequences for breaking moral standards within Christianity? Are there any, Elder Lawyer? What are the moral standards in Christianity? Yeah, very, very good question. Um, I, I think many of us have asked that question, and usually the response is, or you'll get one of the many responses such as, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But um, when you're dealing within the context of the Bible, the Bible gives you the context of what love is. So you can't say love your neighbor as you love yourself without dealing with the foundation or the basis of what the Bible says love is, which is to love God and to keep his commandments. Exactly. Unless you set a moral standard, you cannot put out a, a blanket uh, uh, a statement for mission claiming that it's all about love, love thy neighbor. What do you mean love thy neighbor? Suppose my neighbor is immoral. Huh? Suppose he's a, suppose, suppose he's a child molester and it's known an unrepentant child molester. One of many, 
one of many sins against God. Sexual immorality. Do I have to name some of it? Suppose it's a gender thing where someone is confused about or being taught in schools to be confused about their gender. What's my moral stance on that? What does God have to, am I supposed to love this person without understanding how that mentality affects what? The doctrine? Right. And how that relate to my traditional values and morality according to God? What would that mean for the person I'm loving if now I'm accepting these people in my circle and they're alone with my children? So I believe, Elder Lawyer, this is one of the biggest errors within Christianity because they never sought to, to actually teach a standard according to the Christ that they've always claimed to serve. What is the moral standard mm -hmm. on this? That must be established first. You must establish a ground, a foundation of morality for the people. Next elder lawyer. What are the political stances for Christians? What are the political stances? Because it seems as if elder lawyer that Christianity has become an institution for us that's used to push a liberal agenda, which works against the morality of Christ and the Bible. Mm. <laughs> I mean, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris, they were campaigning in black churches. Without, without our people knowing anything, moral wise about either of these two people. Right now we're going to answer these, but I'm putting it out there. Elder lawyer. <laughs> Christ is the truth. Christianity is a liar. Now, what would the, what would the Christians play on to deceive us? into this over emotion and to a degree to a fault in which we would actually ignore the morality that Christian Christianity was originally built on. Mm. Right. At the end of this elder lawyer, and we're going to put this out there. What has the damage, we have to talk about the damage modern day Christianity has caused on our community. The damage. So what did the Christians, the Roman Empire, know about our people that they could use psychologically against us? You know what they used? These people love God. How do we use that and reverse that and turn it against them? They love God. It's something inherently spiritual about these people. It doesn't matter what we teach them. At the end, they always come back to this God. So we can no longer just fight against this God. He's too powerful. We must be able to use how they feel about their God against them. They are very emotional. They are very passionate people when it comes to their feeling concerning God. So this is what we got to do. This is what we have to do. Elder lawyer, a zeal. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Romans 10, verse number two. In fact, I'll start at verse one. Romans 10 and one. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they, had, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Elder lawyer, that's what the Roman Empire understood. We're reading Paul's writings that was written to Rome. 
in the churches, our, our people, Israelites were frequented, right? Now I'm going to deal with the first part a little later when he, when he actually specify the people that he's writing to Paul, but this is what the Roman empire understood. We have to stop calling them Europeans. We have to stop calling them white people. We're talking about the Roman empire folks that comes with an ideology, an imperialistic political machine of control over the people whether it be what political or religion, they, they could care less at the end of the day. The only thing they care is that they control it all. They don't care if you believe in Christ, as long as they can control the idea of how you believe in him. See? So Paul says, our people got a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So they played on that zeal and love we have for, have always had for the creator. Now, if only they can teach us of another God, their God. Now that zeal has been transferred. And now the Roman empire power structure can use your own zeal against you as a people. Being emotional without understanding why you're triggered or emotional. All this filling with no knowledge behind it. <laughs> I mean, think about it. The only thing they had to do from a political standpoint was go to church and make every black person believe that Donald Trump was more racist than Biden. Y'all know Biden didn't run on anything, right? Outside of people hating Trump. That's that zeal we're talking about. Not saying that Biden or Trump was for us. But we're over emotional without examining who we're getting in bed with. We have a zeal of God, not according to knowledge we weren't supposed to trust our slave master's doctrine christ is true he's truth christianity was always the lie we have a zeal of god but not according to knowledge our people deal too much in their emotions And this is why the Bible says, study the show thyself approved. Let's get that elder lawyer. Yes, sir. The Romans knew that we were, we were emotional people, which can be a good thing with knowledge. Christ, listen, Christ had much emotion and love. So emotion can be utilized righteously don't you don't you know it takes passion and emotion to do what we're doing right now but suppose and this is what the enemy does he'll look at your passion and see how he can use it against you so you must temper that those emotions with the knowledge of god last but not least elder lawyer the last bullet point i'm going to go into is what was the true mission of Christ and did that mission change? Man, wait, wait, wait to this Sunday, boy. I am wait till y'all hear this Academy this Sunday. I'm talking about the news segment and things I'm going into political wise. This is what happens when you have a people without a moral standard, but I digress. Let's read it real quick. Elder lawyer. Yes, sir. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Study to show thyself approve unto God. So now you're not ashamed. You're not going to be like, man, I was tricked. And I'm going to show you, folks, how maniacal, diabolical, evil the institution called the Christian church is and has always been. Not just tonight, but when I go into the Hebrew Bible Academy, that's right. Modern day Christianity. When you put your emotions to the side, you'll realize none of what they're teaching in the Christian church lines up with crisis ministry. None of it. <laughs> and because of, and because of that brothers and sisters, so many people, so many people have walked away and gave up. Because they see the foolishness that comes out of the Christian church and they, they can only relate it to a book. Our people and other people claim that they believed in. They were like, all that foolishness came out of that Bible. Well, you listen, I'm better off just finding God and having him find me separate from all you and that book. And you know what? That was Satan's plan. That was his plan to have you walk away from the book altogether. Okay, and with these institutions, these clown shows that claim to be Christian churches. Elder Lawyer, let's go into the uh, the scarlet and purple beast. I mean, when it talks about with purple and scarlet, let's get that real quick. Yes, sir. First of all, you have to understand the enemies of Christ. The enemies of Christ were who? The Roman Empire. The Roman Empire were enemies of Christ and the disciples. When you look into the, the history, they were the nemesis of the, of the disciples. And you got our people in the Christian church talking about Biden, Trump, politics, triggered, not realizing, hold up, what did God say concerning politics? Where's your morality? According to the Bible you claim to serve that makes one qualified to vet themselves, their families, those around them, and especially lying politicians. Elder lawyer, let's go. Chapter and verse. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I'll show with you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many waters. This is talking about an orchestrated political campaign. which started in Rome that would send out military and missionaries to establish colonies. The harlot that sits on many waters. Christ in the New Testament is identifying the enemies of God. But yet we're living in America and other places still under their institutions. So I'm going to show you the mystery of this beast that sit on many waters. Why did the beast have to go to many waters? Because it was prophesied that the children of Israel would be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth as a curse. And if one of the Israelites are left in earth by the time Christ returned, that alone would end the Romans empire's rule. So they had to go into the other countries because the most high God scattered us there and gained control over the countries 
so that they could eventually finish what they started in Rome. And that's the persecution and the attempt to totally annihilate the bloodline that leads to Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not about power in of itself. It's not about money because they make the money. It was about prophecy. Knowing that there's an unfulfilled prophecy where black people, our people would one day realize the truth of our genealogy and come back to the God who cursed us. So the Romans brothers and sisters was what? They was up against the time that's against them and begin to send out missionaries with their armies to find the lost sheep of Israel. Listen to what we're showing you here. That sit on many waters. Come on, let's go. Verse two, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, what's in the wine? What's in the cup? The original Babylonian religion going back to Nimrod and his mother, Semiramis. Semiramis the virgin mother of Talmuz. So they would trick everyone into believing that the original story of the virgin birth comes with Mary and Christ. Folks, you must throw out everything you've learned in the Christian church to receive the truth of Christ. Everything. You must, you must totally put it all away because it's one lie after the other. One lie after the other. So you must learn again. And it's okay. We're here to teach you. Come on, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse three. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy. Name of what? Seven heads. Name Having of names. blasphemy. Now, did you get to the part where it says uh, purple and scarlet? Uh, next verse. We're going to get there because, but it tells us right here. The, the what's within this construct, the beast, what is it? Read that last piece again, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy which had seven heads and 10 horns, seven heads and 10 horns. The seven heads represents the seven hills of Rome. The 10 horns represents the first union of countries that made the Roman empire, which is now the EU, Germany, Great Britain, Spain, Netherlands. And eventually that beast would grow as it conquered. And eventually they would find the lost tribes of Israel. Okay. They didn't discover anything. That's a lie. They teach in these schools. They knew exactly who we were when the ships hit the shores of central America, uh, uh, North America. They knew who we were in Africa because they chased us in Africa in 70 AD when the Roman empire came against Judah, Benjamin and Levi. They sent mercenaries after the Essenes who were Levi. I have the history folks. We got to come out of this crap thinking we're Africans being divided between Islam and Christianity when we're being pressed on both sides religiously against the enemies of God. Finish reading, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Revelation 17, verse 4. 
And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. In what? Hold up. They're telling you who they are. Let me tell you, the Christian, the Vatican aren't hiding. They're not hiding anything. Hey, folks, I need you to look at this picture and look at this picture. Good. Christianity isn't just a religious, a religious construct. It's political. It's a political construct. Here's the brains. Here, here lies the brain spiritually and otherwise for all European colonizations. This is the, this is the heart, the brain, the spirit of the beast lies in Italy. Do you know what these hats are that they have on folks? Purple and scarlet. Do you know those hats when you turn, when you look at it, it looks like the mouth of fish. There's an ancient, ancient demonic spirit called Dagon that was worshiped in ancient times that they claim was part man, part fish. Dagon, the fish God. These are ancient Babylonian rituals right before us. It has nothing to do with Christ. Zero. They're telling you, but yet we're in these Christian churches wondering why, what we're our communities are eroding. And it's eroding in the midst, it's eroding in the midst of us receiving more Christianity, more religion. Because what? It's rotten. The foundation is rotten. You know what? You know what? A, a crime riddle. A, a community where drugs and people don't care about each other and family and their own loved ones. You, you, you know what that's a product of usually that reflects the religious. That's right. The religious order or the religious leadership of that community. That's what it reflects. So we're just looking at the crime and all the, that on the surface. But if we were to able to look spiritually with the lens of the most high and see how demon riddled our communities are, we would realize it stems from what the religion and what the religious leaders who are in place first, they're the carriers of the demons. The community reflects the, the religious leadership. So I need you all to understand when you go inside the Jewish community, not to say that they're perfect, but they understand that if their community was like ours, it would actually reflect bad on the rabbis. Because it's these, are, these two aren't disconnected. The people aren't disconnected from the religious institutions in their community. They're one and the same. That's what the religious institutions are doing there. It, it's supposed to be the religious institutions to guide people to the almighty. That's why I said Christ is the truth and Christianity in our community is a lie. Because how would the, how would our communities look if Christ set the parameters there, set the order there. So our community in of itself tells us that the Christian churches that have been in power in control of our communities are counterproductive to Christ's mission. Now let's talk. Finish reading other lawyer. Yes, sir. Revelation 17 verse four. 
And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And filthiness of her fornication. And filthiness of her fornication, folks. Focus here. Focus. Now, what doctrine would come through the Christian church? Filth. Straight filth. Don't forget, it was it was the Roman Empire that destroyed us in 70 AD. Christ warned us that they would come. You want to hear it? Why did we run into Africa? Because the disciples already had churches and communities established there. It was an extension of Jerusalem. Christ warned us that the Romans, the pagans, the beast would come. Christ is the truth. St. John 14 and 6, Elder Lloyd, and let's get the book of Luke where it says that they would come for us. The desolation. All right, you want that first or? Uh, yeah, let's get what Christ said first. Yes, sir. Uh, St. Luke chapter 21, verse number 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem can pass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. No, hold, hold, hold up, because I need Christians who are listening to this to focus on what we're showing you here. I need, if you are a Christian, ever went to church, put your feelings to a side and listen to what your Lord, the Christ you claim to serve, is telling you. That he he was he's talking to Israelites here. He's talking to his people, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in the southern kingdom. He's telling them that when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, when you look up and the Roman army is everywhere within the borders, within the borders of Israel. Read. Know that they know that the dust. Know that the desolation is near. What desolation? The plan to eradicate our people in Jerusalem, folks. This is not my opinion. This is not a, 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 a an Israelite doctrine. What we're expounding to you, brothers and sisters, today is actually history that you can find on the outside of the Bible where the Europeans, the Romans, under Vespasian and Titus made a decree to kill our people in Israel. So Christ warned those who believed in him and say, listen, you must, you, you will lose the homeland for the sin of your forefathers and for the sin that, con that you continue to do on my father's land. Oh, in your home called Israel that was given to you through Moses. You will lose the land. The Romans are coming. Know that the desolation that was written in Daniel is here. But Christ had to come and give us what? An opportunity to be baptized and repent for our sins so that we'll have access later to the kingdom that we now were about to lose. This is why Christ came because if it wasn't for Christ, we would be under the European foot forever. We will be under not just the European, all nations have one big foot on us and it's on purpose. So don't think that you can run from Christianity and think there's some uh, 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 reciprocity or some rest or some resolve by going to Islam because the Vatican created that too. The Vatican created modern day Islam. And I have the history on that. And, and they both conspired Ishmael and the Europeans to confuse us 
the whole time that we were just trying to serve, work, take care of our families, serve God, the political and religious constructs had their eyes on us the whole time and said, we could, we could never allow them, these people to know that they were the people who were, who were in Jerusalem or Israel. Read elder lawyer. Then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Now this is Christ's prophecy for those who believed in him, folks. The original Christians understood they were Israelites and understood the prophecy of them going into captivity for the sins of their forefathers. But they would need to preserve themselves and leave Jerusalem before the Roman Empire closed off all the ways all, all the door gateways out of the area to preserve the children of the righteous so that they can one day stand in the future and proclaim their true birthright as Israelites. This how much Christ loved us. That he warned those and say, you can stay here if you want, but understand if you're, if you stay here, you will be killed, enslaved by the Romans and thrown in to the arenas to fight as gladiators. The same as we're in the mark sports right now, it was the Christians. It was our people, not just any Christians, black Christians fighting. <laughs> that's right. In the Marb of Rome. And eventually we would do what? Because of our physical prowess, they would put us in armies and all that. And eventually we would begin to win wars for the Roman empire to win our freedom. And eventually we grew to a point of black generals in the Roman army in the, the Roman army, Septimius Severus and Persinius Niger became great generals who are a product of the Israelites or Jews that stayed in Jerusalem. This is history that they hide from you. They'll make you think there was a dark age and no one, we disappeared. No, we won our freedom and began to establish ourselves again as the children of Israel in Europe, Great Britain. All of them, those original kings were black men from the genealogy of the Jews who stayed in Rome, the Israelites. Oh yeah, I have the history. We're going into all the history in the academy. Okay, straight up. I got the history on every everything I'm saying. I need somebody to disprove it tonight. If I'm a real Christian and believe in Christ, and if you are a real Christian and believe in Christ and saying that you believe that this Christ is real who's speaking, what people is Christ talking about right here who were conquered by the Roman empire? Elder lawyer, let's see what would happen to these people according to Christ. Verse 22, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall come great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Hold up, Elder. They shall be what? And shall be led away captive into all nations. I need you to pause again. They shall be what? Led away captive into all nations. They shall be led away captive into all nations of the earth. These people would lose their identity by being what? Scattered and taught by Gentile nations. This is where we begin to learn false religion under our oppressors. Once we were taken out of the land, according to a curse that the Bible speaks of. Led away captive. So if we're led away captive, eventually 
we would find our what? Freedom in certain areas and begin to go into rem remote areas, the rainforest and different areas to, to escape Roman imperialism. Hence the reason why the Roman Empire began to what? Send out, that's right, missionaries, as well as those they would pay to discover. It wasn't to find new land and to explore and the earth is flat and we're going to prove that the earth, you still believe that garbage they teach you in school. They were looking for us here. Shall be carried away captive into all nations. And then you will have all these other nations say, well, they've been servitude with all people. Y'all people aren't the only one who can claim captivity or servitude. Guess what? Never go for that lie. Because there's no place in history where a hundred million, 90 million, tens of millions of Chinese people were taken away slavery anywhere or white people. They have always been servitude, but that servitude was voluntary, temporary. It was no different than employment. Once you were able to buy your freedom, nine times out of 10 other races, when they serve people, they left with retirement plans for their family. So don't come with this crap to try to compare the curses of our people to what other people were dealing with voluntarily. Oh, you know, Irish came over in slave ships too. That's a lie. Those Irish that was brought over were from the dark ages. Those, those were our people that were taken out of imperialistic positions in Europe and put in shackles and placed in shackles. We're not going for that either. That's a lie. This curse is only on one people. According to Christ, the children of Israel. So you Christians, this is Christ speaking right here in the Bible. Christ is the truth. Christianity is the lie. And I'm going to prove it. Finish reading other lawyer. Yes, sir. Math, uh, St. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Come on. And they shall be led away and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So the Israelites would be trodden down by the Gentiles, which means non-Israelites. We will be under, under the foot of the Gentile nations until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Fortunately for us folks, their time is almost up. This is why they're making all of these plans to do these things with the mark of the beast, uh, 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 the cold. This is why Joe Biden is about to announce, sign a new thing in the legislation for crime to finish what he started with the crime bill of 1994. This is why Joe Biden is now focused on a crime bill that he can now execute from the executive branch instead of the legislative one. Ah, because they know their time is up. So, so you know what it is? It's extermination time. These people were brought here to serve. We have no place for an Israelite or people who understood they were born to be free. Where you Christians at tonight? Now, elder lawyer jumping right in now. Now, before I jump in, let sure. me, in, let me say it again. The Hebrew and Bible Academy starts this Sunday. There's no reason that any of you shouldn't be in this Academy because the news is going, it's news that we have to report that cannot be expounded on this platform, unfortunately. Okay, that's number one. Number two, 
I'm going into the creation of the universe to show brothers and sisters how the spiritual realm interacts with us every day without any of us recognizing it. Okay. Don't forget folks. We're last in creation. The earth came at the end of it. Heavens were created first. There are seniors in creation, which means the spiritual world is just as, if not more real than the world we're living in now. It came first. We were made in their world. Who are they? You're going to find out this coming Sunday. <laughs> The earth was made in their world. You don't want to miss that. Also, I got some new announcements because I thank the most high. Please hit that like button. I really appreciate it. The new calendar is here. <laughs> the new calendar is here. And it starts out by showing you how to calculate the times according to the Sabbaths. And look at all the great work that was done. All the different dynamics, the pictures, which even after the calendar is done, you can frame the pictures. A higher God of all comfort 2022 Hebrew calendar is right here with the theme of the Ten Commandments. Make sure you go to gatheringofchrist.org Get your calendars. We have it ready for you so you can calculate the times according to Sabbath. Now, if somebody want to come in here and tell me that the Jewish Passover, according to the lunar moon, is correct. And what they're doing is more correct than this calendar. We're opening the lines for you, too, because then you have to tell me. How can you get a calendar year out of three hundred and fifty four days? The lunar moon. Each year comes up 10 days too short. And according to the, uh, uh, the modern day calendar, 11 days too short. So if you're going to tell me that the Passover, according to the moon you're dealing with is correct, come with a calculator. <laughs> All right. Jumping right in elder lawyer. Let's go with Christ says many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many let's go there yes sir when matthew chapter 24 verse number three yep and as he sat upon the oh, mount oh, of oh, olives oh, 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 hold on before you go yeah for those who are interested in the hebrew and bible academy i forgot to give you the hold on here's the link right here if you want to press on it you can do it HistoryTimes.org. It's not time. It's times with an S. You go there, you can enroll. And we have people working. And I'm trying to get people in so that every day, every time we do the academy, what we have up into the last minute is people calling my phone and I'm trying to help them in because sometimes I understand we do things last minute. But help us out if you're going to do it. Please do it before Sunday if you, you, know, if you can help it. <laughs> So that, so that I can focus on what I need, to, what we need to do for Sunday that day. Okay. Now, elder lawyer, yes, read sir. that, read what Christ said. Yep. Matthew chapter 24, verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and of the end of the world. So even the disciples ask, what shall be the signs of your coming, Christ? Now, let's see if it's going to be the lies they're teaching in the Christian church. Talking about people going to be raptured before a boogeyman come before the boogeyman comes up. That everyone will know on earth is the Antichrist and claim he's God. See, when you get people to believe one lie, you'll use the same tactics to have them believe the whole thing. Christianity as a whole is one big lie. And what they try to do is argue through what? Philosophy. 
And that's why you can't get tricked up when they talk about the exegesis and the agape love and all this. It's straight garbage. All of it. It's lies. It has nothing to do with Christ. So they'll try to make big words and try to use big words so that people in our community can get impressed with the vocabulary. Not realizing you're talking to the devil. The devil is speaking to you. Our people are enamored. Man, look that word. That, that, man, that word is deep. And you have all these so-called Christian pastors using all these words and claiming, using the words they found in theologian school to come back to the, the hood smart. The claim, oh yeah, I, man, I went to theologian school. And these are, unfortunately, not all of them, but a lot of them come back smart dummies. Why? Because you're coming back with the beast ideology that's, that, that continually erodes and destroys our communities. You're not coming back with the truth of Christ because Christ is not teaching in your theologian schools. You're coming to push a Roman agenda against our people, a pagan ideology that have enslaved them. And use your intelligence and know-how to get around the questions that you know intelligent people will have concerning your false doctrine. Like for instance, show me Sunday worship in the Bible. You ask them questions like that and they'll start doing verbal gymnastics. They'll go to scriptures that says first day. Well, I can go to scripture that says a second day I did something. A third day I did something. Don't try to use first day in the Bible, all through the Bible, as the reason to have Sunday as a holy convocation or a holy day according to God. Well, I can worship God every day. Well, why you do it on Sunday as a holy convocation? So this is where their education in theologian school comes in so that they can explain or try to philosophize why they're why they are going against one of the commandments of the God you went there to learn about. See, I ask straight questions with Christians because why? Because they're great at verbal gymnastics, gymnastics and philosophy to try to get away from a direct question. They cannot give you a direct answer. Why? They can only teach you what they've been taught by the Roman demons in the theologian schools. Like the apologetics, they are straight demons. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. Verse 4. And Yeshua answered and, uh, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Before Christ went into any detail of his coming, he says, watch those people talking about me first. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, Christians, and shall deceive many. And this is what a lot of you don't realize, folks. The majority of the Christian churches that were born uh, uh, out of uh, what you would call the beginning of, of the USA, the United States, the majority of the theology that came from them came directly out of the halls of Freemasonry. Charles Taze Russell, the father of the Jehovah Witness. What is he? That's right, Freemason. Joseph Smith, a white man, over the, the Church of Latter-day Saints. What are they? They're initiates within what? Freemasonry. The majority of the Christian churches, the AME church was what? It came out of a lodge for the black pastors who would become Prince Hall Freemasons. So the new philosophical educated Christianity we see today was actually created to deceive us through an institution to make us believe Christ or God had anything to do with it. 
And this is why Christ says, many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Because if you're going to claim your Christ, you're going to set up Christ's mission verbatim as it is written. You're not going to set up some new philosophy and teach it as the true mission of Christ when it comes to what? Conversion. Okay. You're not going to tell people just confess with your mouth that he's Lord and you saved without giving them ground rules on what, what Christ, what following Christ, what's required in the law when you confess. You're confessing what sins that you've done. Well, the Christian church can't tell you because why they're claiming the laws of God are done away with. That's why Christ says, watch these slicksters who come in my name. They're going to deceive many because the only thing they'll be using is my name. And shall what other lawyer? And shall deceive many. Now, elder, that's what, that was the first sign Christ did. He said to the disciples, watch these guys who destroy my people and set up their new universal churches. Because they're the children of the devil. Watch them. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when you, when you establish your belief on all of emotion without knowledge. Romans 10 tells us that we have a zeal of knowledge, but not, a, we have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. I'm going to show you how what the Christians take advantage of that zeal, that zeal. Who was, who was really the greatest leader that came up after Martin Luther King brothers and sisters? Do you all know? Who was the greatest leader that was talked about, publicized, and promoted to our people after Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, after he was dead? Well, guess, guess who it was, folks? It wasn't a black man at all. You know who it was? You know who it was. Jim Jones. Now there's a lot of alleged stories concerning the creation of Jim Jones, but he was created only to be aimed towards the black community. Not Farrakhan folks, not Khalid. Y'all don't know y'all history. After Martin Luther King the man that was making the most impact within the black communities and growing was Jim Jones. He was created. He was going to use that fire and brimstone that came out of the Baptist church. He was created. Now, this is what it means. Many shall be, shall be deceived. Many shall be deceived and say that they're going to say they're Christ and deceive many folks. I need y'all to hear this and hear this. Well, do you know that 75%, 75% of the members of Jim Jones church were black people. Because you're not going to have no white people or any other race of people that will go for this nonsense. Did you know that 50% of the people who died following this guy were black women? Black women. 75% of the church was blacks because they can only aim this nonsense to show you the mission was to destroy our people. 
Not to say that other races didn't die, but in number, 75% of the church he was aimed towards to convert and confuse were black people. 50% of the women who died, the people who died in the Guyana tragedy were blacks, black women. What is wrong with us? We have a zeal of God, not according to knowledge. And there's a few things that y'all didn't know. I'm going to read this. Uh, in his youth, during the 1950s, Jim Jones was part of the Oneness Pentecostal congregation. Pentecostal. Which is predominantly what? The churches black people go to are predominantly Pentecostal. Apostolic faith. Right? Jim Jones became an ordained minister in the Independent Assemblies of God. 1956. Jones considered the church to be primarily a means to fulfill his political agenda. I'll be able to use what? I'll be able to use the church to advance my political agenda. Churches aren't supposed to have any political affiliations whatsoever. How do you know an unbelieving church? A church in which a lion politician can campaign in. According to his wife, Jones had been not been lured into the ministry by deep religious faith. So he really didn't believe. But because it served his goal of achieving social change through Marxism. What's Marxism? Marxism is the same agenda now they're able to get through through Black Lives Matter. All of those women they set up, it had nothing to do with them and, and George Floyd. It's an ideology, a damning ideology called Marxism. All the women who's over, black women over uh, Black Lives Matter, one came right out and said she's a Marxist. And, they, and she's looking to get, get rid of what you would call the nuclear family, the cis family, which is husband and wife. And the same woman who said that is dealing with alternative lifestyle. She's gay. Jim used religion to try to get some people out of the opiate of religion. She said, this is his wife. Adding that he had once slammed a Bible on a table and said, I got to destroy this paper idol. I got to destroy this paper idol. This demon was against the Bible with a, with a church filled with black people who didn't discern the truth concern because they didn't read the Bible. This guy called the Bible a paper, paper idol with a church filled with black people. What's wrong with us? It says in the early stages of the people's temple function a more of a religious organization with than a church. Jones told his congregation that a nuclear war would occur on July 15th, 1967. It didn't happen. And 70 families followed him to safe Haven. Oh you know, yeah. How safe was that? Right. In 1970, Jones abandoned all pretense of being a Christian minister. Joan also began preaching that he was the reincarnation of Buddha, Gandhi, Vladimir Lenin, and Jesus. How many of y'all know, knew that? That he was the reincarnation of Buddha, Gandhi, Vladimir Lenin, and Jesus. Okay, there's more, there's more. He showed a preoccupation with sex. As congregant noted, oh, and he would talk for hours about sex 
and about how good he was and how women should think he was making love to them, not their husbands, and about how all women sent him notes that they wanted to see him. Jones, a bisexual. Now, this is the report. Reportedly had numerous affairs with both men and women in his congregation. Now, that's alleged from this report. But another thing that's in this report, brothers and sisters, is that his first sermon in Guyana and Lauren, our people, the majority of people, 75% of blacks into that area. His first sermon came from the steps of a Catholic church in Guyana. When he lured our people there. Fair use. Seventy five percent black. Fifty percent black women. Drunk the juice. Listen to what he says in his own words. Fair use. Call me father, call me mother, call me morphodite, call me queer, call me whatever you want. I don't care what you call me. If you could learn to think like me, you'd get the power I got. What did he say in 1973? What did he say? Call him what? What were they calling him? Let's do it again. But as long as you got fear, you won't have any power. You're afraid of somebody up there. I'm afraid of nobody. I'm afraid of nobody. This guy was insane. First sermon from a Catholic church. Listen to what he say. Call me father, call me mother, call me morphodite, call me queer, call me whatever you want. I don't care what you call me. You can call me a maphrodite. Call me queer. So I'm su I'm not surprised that none no people from the so-called LBGT, whatever letters they have, are claiming this guy as a part of their community. See, and this is why the Bible has standards. If we will allow this, where our people, 50% of our sisters, get killed following something that's supposed to be of Christ, black women following this, this demon, this fool, who claimed to be a Christian pastor someplace, Seventy-five percent of our people up in these churches. What are our people doing? We have a zeal of God. Now, the reason why these numbers are so disproportionate is because eighty percent of devout churchgoers in America so happens to be black people by statistic. We're the most religious and devout because we have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge that Christians take advantage of. Now, now, here are the questions, and then I'll open up the lines and I'll give it to you, Elder Lawyer. When you Christians call in, 515-605-9327, I need to know what are the moral standards. At one time, me, while growing up, one of the moral standards were that you, ha you must be married before you have sex. Well, that's out the window now. All together. So what are the moral standards according to Christianity that's upheld within a Christian church? What are they according to Christ and according to the Bible? 
what are the political stances for Christians? Why do Christians feel a need, feel a need to push liberal agendas in which it's okay for a woman to decide that she want to uh, discontinue her life giving process. I can't use the word because certain words trigger things. Okay. When she, when she decide that they want to delete a child, y'all know that's the Democrat party, right? Now, not to say that we're not for the Republicans. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is what party would Christ belong to? Because Christ said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and what is God, God's. And every, every year or every uh, voting cycle, I hear somebody come out of their mouth who's so-called Christian. Oh my God, you got to vote. You know how many people died that you could vote? And my response is, you know who died so that you could see the truth woman or man who claimed to be a black Christian who claimed to be a Christian in general. Do you know who died so that you can revit so that you can understand the truth? Christ says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and God is God's that Christ's kingdom is separate from this kingdom that we can be in the world, but not of it. Why have a hand and pulling a lever in a process that you know is against you? When Christ isn't on the ballot, when the system was set up to destroy you, read Christ's words. What type of Christian church would allow a politician to campaign in what he calls God's house? And this is why the Jim Jones and others, and because there's no standard of right and wrong that have ever been taught in our churches. What is the mission, the true mission of Christ? We're going to answer that later. Christians, what is the true mission when you go out to convert? Outside of outside of claiming that, that Christ is given an opportunity to help us get over the ills society creates in our community. Man, Jesus, he delivered me from, from crack. When it's the same Roman empire that was behind, allegedly behind the crack that's in your neighborhoods. It was the system that, that put the crack there. And now you're saying God had delivered me from it which is good if you, if you have been, that's good. But it become a secular cycle where we think uh, uh, being saved is actually being rescued from what? The social weaponry, drugs and otherwise, and the societal weaponry that was strategically placed in our neighborhoods. We don't even understand what being saved is anymore. What is the true mission of Christ? When someone received Christ, what are they supposed to know? What are their, what are their true purpose now that they understand what? What's required by them from Christ. Now that they've been baptized and confessed their faults, what is required of them? Is there a standard according to the Bible that they can now take in and live a new life being born again? And last but not least, we need to, to discuss the damage modern day Christianity continues to do. What? We're going to talk about the modern, uh, the, 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 uh, the damage modern day Christianity caused in our community. It allows strangers to come in to rip us apart. They're vultures. 
If you go into the suburbs, if you go into the Jewish community, you'll never see the Church of Latter-day Saints riding on bikes and walking down the street, converting. Ever. That means they are strategically targeting God's people to confuse us with all these different ideologies that came straight from the mother, the whore, the harlot, the Vatican. It's the only community on earth where we have a lot of religion, but yet our community suffers so. There's a Buddhist temple, an Islamic temple. Uh, uh, um, now you got shamans in the community. You got people all in the community from different walks of life. But when you go into other communities, none of this exists. Why? So we have to talk about the damage modern day Christianity has done to our community and actually relate it. Related. Not only that, it's responsible. The Christian leaders in our community are responsible for what's happened, what has happened there. Because they're supposed to be the spiritual leaders who would do what? Teach the fear of God. Put a standard on those within their, within their churches concerning morality and let them know there's consequences, not just according to God, for breaking the standard. So the Christian leaders are personally responsible for the destruction of what we call the ghetto. So Christians, I need y'all to call in. Call in. We're going to talk about it, Elder Lawyer. And anything you have to say, Elder Lawyer, after the commercial, I'll bring you in and then we'll open up the calls. And if you have any questions tonight, now is your time. If there's something that you don't understand concerning what we teach, as long as we can amicably conversate and come to edifying at the end of it, I'll be willing to have that dialogue without argument. If the bottom line is to edify for the people who are listening so that they'll have a greater understanding of God's work. Okay. Hold tight. We'll be right back. Elder Lloyd, and we'll pick it up with you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the word of God. The seals have been broken and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, February 6th, this coming Sunday, begins the brand new Hebrew and Bible Academy. I'm excited about it. Three full months of serious breakdowns. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, folks. The Bible and the Apocrypha together will be broken down in this academy, starting off with week one, the creation of the universe. How was all this made? We're going to show brothers and sisters like and I, and I wonder why there's so much pride, Elder Lawyer, when it comes to our people. Instead of coming with a honest question because they don't know. 
Sometimes when they comment on some of our, our videos in response to us, it's to claim that they are, that, that they are teaching something that we're wrong somewhere. Like for instance, someone left a message and say, well, God created the earth in seven actual days, not 7,000 years and thought it was a mic drop. And I said, second Peter's three and eight teaches that one day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years one day. So you can't be speaking of earth years, according to man, when man isn't created yet. <laughs> so if one day with the Lord is a thousand years, why would Peter state that? He was talking about the time span. Starting from the beginning to judgment. So yes, when it says seven days, it's talking about seven days, but man isn't created yet for the person. And I left the, I left the comment up there because this is what they do. It says seven days with all thy getting, get understanding. Second Peter three and eight says one day with the Lord is a thousand years. It took 6,000 years from the beginning of creation to create everything we see today. And he rested from creating the 7,000th year. This is why the law of the Sabbath, remember to keep it holy, was instituted in the law given to Moses. That law didn't start with Moses. It started in the beginning of creation when Adam knew to hollow that day and teach it to his children. <laughs> Right. So instead of just coming out and saying, well, listen, all due respect elders, this is what I was taught. Can you clear it up for me? Or maybe there's something they don't understand. And instead of them saying, well, it's conflicting with my programming. They are rather just staying hard on something without the understanding. But this is what Christianity has done. Elder lawyer. This is what it has done. It, it made it where our people argue mute points over who knows the Bible better. But at the end of the day, it's the enemy that's seeking to destroy us all. <laughs> and guess what? Here's a deep part about it, elder lawyer. These are the people who would debate and try to come against us who had no argument and no problem with all the lies that were taught to them by the, the European Christian church. It's like they want to take out of all of their now aggression of the lies that have been taught to them on those who are here to help them. <laughs> like, like, like where's all that steam? All of that for those, there was no pushback. Every time the so-called Edomite in his theologian school was teaching you that garbage, you're like, yeah. oh man, this is deep. Oh, agape love. Oh man, that's spiritual. I'm going to say that next Sunday with no pushback. All right. Elder lawyer. Yes, and, then, and, and, and then, then another woman came. Another woman came and says, well, when you talk about the woman seed and Mary and all that, it tells us about the woman seed in Genesis where he put a curse on the woman and say the woman seed. So a woman can have seed. And I'm like, well, okay. I understand that sister. It says woman seed there, but you know, Adam and Eve, a man seed created Cain. The curse was on the woman based on the children that would come out of her, but it took Adam's seed to make those people, to make Cain, to make the serpent seed who will be utilized and used for Satan against the righteous. It took a man. So you can't use the woman's seed and say that a woman can have seed without a man and use that scripture. <laughs> Adam was involved. 
And I'm so tired of these doctrines excluding the black man. <laughs> we exist. Okay. Eve was it, exactly. <laughs> so even though it was her curse, it took a man's seed to bring forth those people. Lord have mercy. Elder lawyer, the floor is yours. And yes, then we'll sir. open up the cause. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, real quick, uh, going over some of the questions that were asked, uh, what is the moral standard in the Christian church? And um, I want to start off by stating that uh, obviously we know that there are churches out there far and few between that still kind of hold to some degree of the fire and brimstone, you know, principled uh, style of teaching where it's condemning acts of evil and things of that nature. We know that that still exists. Mm -hmm. But as it says in the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, my people assemble in troops outside of the harlot houses. Our people are not going into those churches in number. Our people are going into the churches where the things that they want to do can be excused. Our, our people are going into the churches where it's believe and receive. Our people are going into the churches where uh, someone can obviously uh, be living in a lifestyle that is against the Bible, that opposes the Bible. Some of which you mentioned earlier, going into Jim Jones and some of the, the lifestyle and, and just for the sake of, you know, Again, we're trying to be careful with the language, but with the lifestyle that he was living, okay, according to history, a lot of our people, they, they, or those of our people who are in those lifestyles have found havens. They have found places where they can do that and feel, you know, their conscience can be excused because, you know, maybe they can sing on the choir very well, or maybe they can play the organ very well, or maybe because they, they pay good types they've found that there's a haven for that activity and it will be accepted. It will be ignored. Um, the, 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 a blind eye will be turned to the activity of, opposed to getting the person to actually recognize that what they're doing is against the laws of God and that in order for them to see the pearly gates, as they say, they must repent. Okay? Now it says here in the book of Isaiah 56, and 10, it says, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Mm. They cannot speak. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, mm. which can never have enough. Mm. And they, or they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain from his quarter. Come, ye say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. So it's sad to say that the morality of many of the churches that our people attend, that claim to be Christian churches, the morality is money. Mm. Whatever keeps the bag coming, we'll excuse it as long as we're getting the bag. The morality has become money. Now, you may have some who, you know, don't smoke, don't drink, don't curse, be a good person, you know, don't fornicate, so on and so forth. You may hear those things from time to time, but it's really no, it's not coming from any basis of what are the actual principal laws of God, which tell us that we should not do these things. And if we do these things, here is the result. The other point, uh, the last point you mentioned, I know there were other questions, but I'll just deal with this one as well. Yeah. Uh, the liberal agendas, and then I'll, I'll conclude. Um, <clears throat> why, does it, why does it seem like the churches, again, within our community, that our people attend, and I'm, I'm making that very clear because, again, there are other churches out there that may be a little bit more conservative. There's churches out there that are considered right-wing. Praise God, pass the ammo. Again, those churches exist. Our people are not frequenting those churches. They're going to these places that we're mentioning tonight. Yeah. Okay? So why do our people tend to go to churches that promote liberal agendas? Well, for the same, well, 
Or better yet, why do the pastors or those who are over these churches and the ministers over these churches promote liberal agendas? Yeah. And I would say for the same exact reason that Jim Jones promoted liberal agendas. Many of them have no interest whatsoever in the Bible. Many of them have no interest whatsoever in God or Christ. Many of them have political agendas, which they know they just strictly just came out to our people and said that this is what we stand for. This is what we're about. We're about alternative lifestyles. We're about certain uh, agendas, either government agendas or what have you. If they just came out and just strictly said that to our people, our people would be hesitant. They would turn, you know, people would just turn away from them. I don't want to deal with you. I don't agree with that lifestyle or what have you. They would just turn away from them. So what a lot of these pastors do, this is what I believe personally. I believe a lot of these pastors, like Jim Jones, who had personal uh, political agendas that he wanted to push, they go and they they use the Bible, they use religion as a cover to promote their agendas. And, they go and, to theologian seminary. And they use blacks as their constituency. I, exactly. There's no way Jim Jones could have ran this con game amongst whites. It seemed like everyone, in, in order for them to get some political status of numbers, to show that they can actually uh, uh, be a political powerhouse, they must use black people as their test dummies. Exactly. And it doesn't matter whether it be the LBGT, women, white women, liberation, no matter what it is, you notice they always come through the back door, through the black church first to use us and say, yeah, I'm with them, only to grab the bag and leave us destitute. But go on. It's, exactly. it's, I mean, what's wrong with us? Because there's no standard. But go ahead, Elder, Elder Lawyer. I'm sorry. It, it, exactly. You hit, you hit the nail on the head. You know, for example, you have men, but you also have women in our community that, hey, they, they may be dealing with certain alternative lifestyles. And again, if they just came out and said, this is an organization, organization in the black community for alternative lifestyles, people would say, listen, we're not really, we're not dealing with that. We don't necessarily want that. That's not, that's the last thing on the list that we need. But if that woman or that man goes and get a, 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 a degree from a theologian seminary college and then come back into the community as a pastor, yeah. as a deaconess, as a preacher, and open up a church, handing out food and doing certain things in the community, people are coming through, like Jim Jones. He was doing a lot of things in the community, feeding people. So, yeah, our people start to come through, and slowly but surely, they start to, that, that, their true agenda starts to creep in. They start letting you know that, yeah, the Bible, yeah, I like the Bible for what it, you know, for what it is. But can we truly trust the Bible when you got these other Mesopotamian records and other things from Egypt and, and Kemet that predate? Can you really believe it? Well, I believe in, you know, spirituality and I believe that you, know, you can love who you want to love. And when the Bible says man, uh, uh, loving man as uh, or man lying with mankind as he lied with the woman. That's talking about pedophilia. That's not talking about uh, a man choosing to love a man and a woman choosing to love a woman. That's dealing with something else. So that's, you know, all of these different things they'll start to bring out after they slowly but surely lure the people into their organization. And it's on the part of strong leadership to, to actually teach the people and show the people the signs to look out for as we have tonight. Because going back to Jim Jones, Jim Jones could have not been successful if there were strong leadership, strong, let's say, Christian leadership in the black community who was able to teach the people the signs to look for. Exactly. I'm going to read this last scripture. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, exactly, but go on. Yep, last scripture just on this, this point, and I'll conclude. This is Micah 2 and 11. If a man walking in the spirit of falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be a prophet of this people. So in other words, our people are so destitute of understanding that we'll accept anybody. Someone can come prophesying of wine and strong drink and Hennessy and cognac and... They can come prophesying of anything or teaching of anything and we'll receive it just as long as they're, you know, they're handing out turkeys and, you know, they, they're feeding that emotional thing that we need, the emotionalism. We'll receive it without actually going through the Bible and checking if this person is a valid minister, if this person is actually teaching the gospel according to God. And that's, 
it's going to be on our part in this time to make sure, as we're doing tonight, that our people have the biblical information to be able to examine anyone that comes in, into the community claiming that they have uh, an agenda or they're, they're, they're a, a pastor or a minister or someone who is seeking to serve the community, yet along with them are, are coming all of these alternative agendas that are destroying our community. And, and with that, I yield. And I'm glad you brought that out, Elder Lloyd, and I'm about to open up the calls because I really want to hear what these Christians have to say. I hope they're in here. And hope they're coming in with honest questions, okay, to edify so that we can come on one accord. Because first and foremost, before we're Israelites, we're believers in Christ. Okay, first. That's first and foremost, not the other way around. So I want to make that clear, okay? Now, it more so at this point, the onus falls on the people, not the Christian pastors, because Christ said, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It's up, on, it's up to the people to understand how to vet according to a standard. When I run into a pastor or a preacher or someone who serves to communities, I have to know what his core belief systems are. What is his stance on God's law? If this guy tell me outright with his verbal gymnastics that God's law is done away with and begin to lie and say that we can't keep the law. And then because my response to passes when they state that elder lawyer is okay, if we can't keep the law, what are you establishing as the moral code in your church? Right. So you're confusing people. People are coming in to repent, to have a newness of life, but how can they have, how can they be reborn? be born again if you're not teaching them the laws they were breaking in ignorance according to the law within that book you're teaching from every Sunday. And a matter of fact, since you're speaking of Sunday, where can we find Sunday worship as the holy day of God weekly in the Bible? Well, we follow 10 commandments. No, if you're not remembering the Sabbath to keep that holy, you're not following the 10 commandments. You're following, I hope you're following the other nine. Have no other God before me and bow down to it. Nine times out of ten in our communities, there says a Bogier or some other idol on the wall they're bowing to. Breaking the first commandment. Thou shall not covet. Thou shall not want what other people have. And that's all we're talking about is keeping up with the Joneses. Another commandment we're breaking. <laughs> right? So, I don't know. Um, well, let's open up the lines now. We're nine o'clock on the dot. Elder lawyer, hold tight and let's bring in the calls. I'll call you right back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you have any other questions concerning our doctrine, which is Christ's doctrine, and you are an Israelite, you can call in too. Doesn't matter. It's about Christ at the end of the day. Right? Hold on. I'm going to call in with the rest of you. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. Please hold and you will be able to listen to the show. Okay, Elder Lawyer. You Unmuted. Can... Okay, I'm here with Blog Talk. Thank you for being here. You can see the topic of the... Of, of the show, and hey, I guess this is where it gets real interesting, right? Dialogue, even if you disagree. Christ is the truth. Christianity as an institution is a lie. Is a lie. Now, I had a white guy, Elder Lawyer, I need you to bring your video in back for me real quick. I had a white guy, so-called European, because understand we accept all nations. All right. 
And then because a lot of what we teach cannot be denied. It's prophetic. So we'll have black, we have white women, white men who would, who would, uh, who would come in and be offended, not because there's no truth on this channel, but they'll say ignorant. They'll make ignorant comments. Like it seems like it's always come back to come back to race. This is what I'm hearing with white people that make comments, not all, but very few. I would get one or two of them at least what? At least three times a year. But I'm sure other white people who aren't commenting, commenting thinks that. It always come back again, come back to race. Folks, it has always been about race. Wake up. Nation against nation. What is that? What did Christ talk about? When you have two ruling bloodlines and one earth, there will be a conflict. Christ is coming to bring conflict. He's coming to take down. Christ is coming to take down the powers of this world to set up his kingdom. That's racial. And I think it's disingenuous and disrespectful for someone of another persuasion to come in and make a comment and think that we can talk about what's going on in the earth and exclude race. When race plays a, a key component in every part of our existence, be it black or white. If you work somewhere, you had to fill out your ethnicity on the job application. And not once did you look at the application and the guy you about to be uh, 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 interviewed by and say, well, how, why is this about race? I can do a job. Why is there race on the application? It's only when we're speaking. And I really believe to some, they believe that eventually if we continue to talk about race, that there'll be some level of vengeance. From the people who were oppressed. That's the paranoia that comes with how media. How media. Do what? Scare the population of whites into believing that blacks are thinking payback. And they do that to do what? To stop the conversation. We're not talking race because we hate another race. We're talking race because that is what we lost, our identity. And Christ said he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it's a blessing to be able to, what? State claim to our national origin without you feeling threatened by it. You should thank the Most High we know. And thank the Most High that as an Israelite, I know that I'm not supposed to blame white people for what happened to me. My four parents sinned and now we have to suffer the curse until deliverance. And if we walk in the commandments of the most high, we'll be protected. There will be no white rulership if it wasn't for the disobedience of Israelites who went away from the law, statutes, and commandments of God, the same people who came out of Egypt. That's not the white man's fault. People got to stop being paranoid and triggered by the media because they, they, they are fermenting a racial war because they don't want people who believe in Christ to come together. I'm sorry, but here it is. If you have any, if you have any issues, whatever the case is, let's open up the lines. Yolanda, you're first. 217. Shalom. Hey, Yolanda. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. The floor is yours. Uh, awesome. Okay. I just turned down my TV so that there was no interruption. So I can't hear, couldn't hear you. Um, I just, it's you. Oh my gosh. It's you, it's you, it's you. <clears throat> I want to thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to say this really quick. 
So when I started waking up to the truth back in like 2013, 14, there were very, 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 very few people on YouTube speaking, speaking anything about the truth at all. So I was trying to figure out who Cesar Borgir was. I, with my heart and soul, thought he was Christ. And I, when I closed my eyes to pray, that's who I prayed to. So I'm flip. I'm trying my best to figure out, um, you know, who is you – know, somebody said to me, well, what did Christ look like? And I'm like, you know, that's a good question. So I started researching, started going through the scriptures, and I couldn't find it. And I started going through YouTube, and I found you. And mm. I just want to say thank you. You were sitting with, a, like, a white shirt, and you had, like, a white wrap around your head, and you were sitting with another guy. And this was, like, many years ago, but you were explaining who Cesar Borgia was. Okay. So I just want to thank you, first of all, for that. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much because you, you, you really helped open my eyes to who – uh, to the truth, you know, to who Cesar Borgia, Cesar Borgia actually is. But I just wanted to make a okay, comment. Okay, for those for those who's just, for those who's listening, real quick, Yolanda, don't know Cesar Borgia. You should if you've been following our channel. That's the second son of Alexander the Sixth, Pope of Rome. Okay, he's the white man whose image was used by the Vatican to portray the image of Jesus Christ to the New World and abroad. That's an actual man that you see that plays in the passion of Christ. That was an actual image of a criminal from the Vatican. And when you read a book called Triptyke of Poisoners, there's a picture of Cesar Boger there. Okay. By Jean Platy called Triptyke of Poisoners. He was able to poison all the enemies of his father to, so that his father could stay in power. That's where you get the underlying story of the Godfather from the Bogier family. That's the image of the white man, the triptyke of poisoners who poisoned his father's enemies for power. That's the image that's used for the modern day Christian Jesus Christ and Christ. I, I hope y'all don't get upset with this. Christ was a black man. Just as dark as I am. Okay. He wasn't an Arab or <clears throat> Middle Eastern. The disciples who made the first mission for Christ's teachings were all black. Acts 13 tell you that they were Niger. N-I-G-E-R. It's not racist. It's the truth. The Romans were pagans. So I just wanted to clarify that, sister, for the brothers and sisters. Because when you mention a name... I have to give the historical background on it, but go on. I appreciate that. And that at that point, I still did not know what Christ looked like. So I couldn't find a description in the Bible. So I started looking and looking and praying. I was up all night just going through my Bible, and I was walking down my hallway the next morning, and there was a voice in my ear that said, I'm black. Oh, are you and kidding I'm like, me? What? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? You got to be, I said, you're black? What? So... Anyway, I, I just started reading and I finally found Revelation chapter, you know, one, one, and then I just read that and then I got an understanding. But yeah, to, to go from, you know, being completely brainwashed with Cesar Borgir and then to find out Christ is a black man with dark skin and yeah. woolly hair was just, I mean, I was so devastated and that, I mean, I was happy. But I was extremely devastated because I had been lied to for so many years in the Christian church. So that right there is just the biggest piece of poison that they could have ever, ever did. And it's so damaging to the point that it's 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 unbelievable how they pulled all this over. I mean, it's just very unbelievable. So I just wanted to say that to you and I wanted to say thank you. And I was just Actually, um, you came up on my recommended. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's him. You know, so I just subscribed. So I'm a new subscriber. But I just want to say thank you. But I also want to mention one other thing. And that is I'm hoping that someone from Christianity or from the Christian church can call in and please answer some questions. Because I myself, when, when, when I was, you know, started waking up to the truth, I was in church. So I went to the pastor and I said, you know, it was a very diverse church, huge church, you know, with all these different pastors. I mean, and I said to him, I said, what, 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 what does Christ look like? And he said, I'll, I'll get back with you on that. I, you know, and then I, they, and I said, well, who can, what, what, what scripture can I read to find out, you know? And then he just stared at me. And I said, one other thing I said, when 
do you celebrate, you know, we keep the Ten Commandments, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, so how do I celebrate the Sabbath? And he had no answer. Good question. And that's very, very hurtful. It was so hurtful. And I had to do all this research on my own to try to figure out all these things. And it, you know, finally, like I said, that was back in 2013. Well, no, yeah, that's 2013, 14, when that, when that happened. But, you know, after all these years, and it's just like, and then another thing that happened real quick is that someone outside the church told me after, and at this, at this time I was living with the guy and someone outside of the church said, you, well, you know, fornicators don't inherit the kingdom of God. And I'm like, what's a fornicator? Now I'm in church all these years. This subject never came up. This sermon was never preached. And they said, that's a person that is having sex and is not married, you know, is not. And I said, what? So I immediately, this was actually a Sunday after I had left church. I immediately called the church, got the voicemail. And I said, Hey, I said, I just found out that fornicators don't inherit the kingdom. I finally found a scripture on my own. And it was first Corinthians six, nine that said, you will not inherit the kingdom. And I said, I'm devastated. I'm living with the guy. You guys never, ever, ever, ever preach this. I'm here for Bible studies on Wednesday, and I'm here on Sundays. I'm paying all this money to tithes, and I never knew this. Mm. So the next Sunday, I never got a call back. Yeah, the next Sunday, I went to the church, you know, went to that church, and the pastor had a mannequin of a lady in in a wedding dress on one side of in the pulpit, and and a another mannequin with of a guy in a tuxedo, and he had an air mattress in the middle. And he said, this bed is for husband and wife. And I was super devastated after that, you know, thinking like how many other people are sitting here in my same situation back in the day, no one lived together unless they were husband and wife. No one did. So I just know that didn't happen. And it's, it's not spoken about enough. I mean, I, I try my best to, you know, enlighten people when, you know, when I, when, when the spirit tells me to, you know, but just to enlighten people, but it's never spoken about enough. And that is huge, you know? So I just, again, want to say thank you. I mean, again, I was, don't want to take up much time, but I'm hoping that some Christians will come on here and say, oh, we, we changed now. We, 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 you know, we actually tell you guys how to keep the commandments. We tell you about fornication. We tell you about the unclean foods. We tell you about, you know, all the things that are major that are never discussed. So I just want to, again, say thank you. And I couldn't believe it when I flipped You know, when I got the recommended, I'm like, that's the guy. That's him. That's him. (laughs) So I just want to say thank you. I'm not sure if the same guy that you're with now was the same guy that was on that video, but it was a it was a pretty short video and you were so sincere. And I'm like, this brother right here knows what he's talking about. And you were bringing scriptures. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that's Cesar Borger. That's him. You know, so I just want to say thank you. And hopefully, you know, some Christians can call in and say, hey, church is different now. You know, we're. We're, we're actually teaching the people the truth. You know, I, I don't know. I just, um, I, I really tried very hard to stay in church because I really miss the worship and praise in, in the black churches. The worship and praise is so amazing and it's so filling. So that was one of the things that was very hard, but I couldn't do it because as soon as I walked in, I'd see, you know, all these graven images and all the things that were going against just the commandment. So I just want to say thank you um, and shalom, brother. I really appreciate your, uh, your show so far. It's awesome. Well, thank you, sister. And I hope you'll at least look into the uh, the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Go to HistoryTimes.org. Look into it, because I think at the stage, I will. At the stage you're in right now, it, this, it will be a great tool for three months every Sunday where you can be, just be filled with understanding that Bible. And we have the, the updated news that you can't find that we can't even talk about here. So. Uh, and lawyer deal with the Hebrew 101. It's very, it's a very, 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 very good uh, class for those who are beginners. So, and, and for those that are and advanced, will, either way. So, and we start this Sunday. One so. quick question. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. One quick question for you. How many years have you been in the truth? Just curious. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> um, uh, I would say 22 years. Wow. Uh, oh, praises to the most high. Yeah, about 22, 23 years. But the, all in all, the truth of Christ happened where I found the truth of Christ. Because knowing you an Israelite is just finding the truth of our genealogy. I That's can't, right. I can't That's say that. That's mind-blowing as well. Yeah, but it is mind-blowing. But some people get stuck there believing that's the truth. When it was the Israelites. Yeah. 
it was the Israelites who, who drummed up a lynch mob to kill the true Israelite who is Christ. So I had to, wow. I had to be able to decipher the difference between an Israelite according to the flesh and an Israelite according to Christ to not become Pharisee. If you go into strictly the history, you cannot do that without developing some negative sentiment against mm -hmm. other people racially. So it's unbalanced. Yes. It's, it was the spirit of Christ that let me reason and understand that I'm not supposed to use my history of receiving the knowledge of who I am against other people. Wow. Because he was graced. That's amazing. He was graced enough to give me information that most people live their whole life without receiving. I should be grateful and use that as a tool to help people, my people and other races of people. Right. That's right. So that's, 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 that's beautiful. See, but that's, but I received that level of truth through the Holy spirit around 2002, 2003 wow. is when I really got the truth. Okay. Just, wow. just knowing who you are, isn't enough. It have to no, be, it's not. it have to be and balanced with the mission of Christ because those who killed Christ and gave them up to die knew they were Israelites. All right. Yes. All right. Well, oh, th that's beautiful. One last, one last quick thing. I just yeah. want to say to you is that, you know, um, I, I just one, one more question, actually. You didn't go to any type of schooling or any type of theological school or any, any of that. Never went to a theological okay. school. So that, ever. So, so let me tell you how powerful your knowledge is. Christ is knowledge. Your knowledge is so powerful. Go because the, Yes, because the Spirit gave you, Christ, the Spirit of Christ gave you the knowledge that you have. And yes. that can go above no uh, that, that goes above any school that's out there. So it's amazing. I thank you, brother. I am so very grateful that I found you and all praises to the most high. Thank, thank you so you. much and for taking hey, my call. And I'm glad you're here, sister. Welcome home. Bless you. <laughs> okay. Bless you too. Shallow. All right, Yolanda. All right. Next call. Michael has a comment. Hey, Shalom. How you doing? Shalom, Michael. The floor is yours. Uh, as you can see, the topic of discussion, Christ is the truth. Christianity is the lie. Uh, yes, yes. I um, just want to say um, happy to finally speak to you and um, be on the phone with you. Um, so many questions is rushing in my head. But yes, I do agree with you. I'm also uh, a Christian turning to well, now understanding my truth of a true Israelite. Okay. And um, I'm just learning as I go, and I'm really um, learning fast, too. One thing I do have a little um, pushbacks with my family, though, because they are Christian, and I come from, a, I don't know if you heard, fire baptism. Okay. So um, I'm from Jersey, but I live in New York now. Uh, church that I came from was under a female bishop called Bishop Barnes. Okay. And um, I, I know your whole story on that, which is, which is good to know. But um, she gave me a lot of teaching, which brought me to you, you know. And um, I, I found out, I found your program through my cousin. And he and he was just like, uh, how you say a person that's studied many religions. Okay. He's confused. He, that, means he, that, that means he's confused. But go on. Yeah, he, he's confused, but he, he also pointed you out, too. Okay. And, um, yeah, you know, and he's the one who got me more on this type of path of claiming Judah, and Israelite, and, you know, so I really owe it to him. Praise but, the most um, high. But let me, let me let me speak on that. Yeah. The Bible tells yeah, us yeah. the uh, the Bible tells us that one man Christ, one man planteth, another man watereth, yeah. but it's the Most High who give the increase. Yes, it is. So anyone can be used, any circumstance can be used if it was meant for you to be chosen. 
Okay. That's great. That's good. So yeah. all, it still goes back yeah. to the most high, even with me as a vessel teaching with that brother who studied many religions, there were the angels operating the whole time so that you can stand face to face in that book with the word, with the words of the almighty. That's where he wanted you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like but, the book of exactly. Enoch, the but, exactly. But go on. What is your right. question? What is your question or comment? When so, it comes so the, to, when it comes so, to your um, family, you you was rounding it out. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm gonna give you like a little basics, and then ask your question and, and get your comments on stuff. Um, I just like I wanted to talk okay. to you for the longest. Well, I really want to deal um, with this call in a way in which it's ed it no, edifies. No. So it gotta edify. <laughs> For the audience, so I, yeah. what I don't, what I don't, you don't, what I, what we can't do, and I, and I can help you with it, is not deal with all of the train of thought that's coming through your conscience to explain to me everything that you've been thinking up into a time, up into this time, wanting to speak to me. Quantify, yeah. quantify if you can. Uh, what, I will. what you okay, need in this question. call? Yeah, go on. Um, coming out of the Christian church. Do I have to get rebaptized into your church or to the Israelite faith? Yes. Um, well, well, let me. Let, the okay, okay. Let me make it clear. You don't have to be baptized into my church. Okay, this is the body of Christ. So I know I got to correct that because no, I. You have to understand this is edifying for those. Don't forget, there's there's those that are enemies that hear this. Right. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and yeah. If they want snippets, yeah, they can get it. But I don't want people to actually deal with that as a perception at all. This is Christ's church, number one. But number two, your answer to that is: after being baptized in the Christian church, do you must you be rebaptized? The answer is yes. And this is why, when when John disciples came to Christ's Christ. Disciples, they said, we don't know of this Holy Spirit that we've seen, mm. right? So what happened was mm -hmm. all of John's disciples were baptized in the name of Christ over, even though they were baptized under John, mm -hmm. because you were baptized okay. into, into another spirit. Yeah, true. Th that original spirit came from the, the blood sucking Holy Roman Church. Yeah, and I and now as listen, and you weren't taught the law to know exactly what you were repenting from. So you continued to sin unknowingly. You were still sinning against the laws of God, right? When did you stop eating pork? <laughs> I stopped eating pork pork when I really got into your um I'm I'm asking your you, sermons. How long the, ago was that? Oh uh Two, two, two and a half years. Two and a half years yeah, ago, you, years. you sound like a grown man to yeah. me. The whole time you was baptized yeah. in the church, you were destroying your body with an unclean meat that God said don't don't even touch, let alone consume. So you so yeah. you were baptized under a name that could receive swine, unclean thing. So, so you don't know, they're not teaching what being born again is being born again is changing your lifestyle, be it even the things that are unclean that you will put in your body and walk in newness of life, according to God's law in the spirit of Christ. You weren't taught none of that. Right. No, so then that's why it says no. that you I must, it, not, the, 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 bap, the baptism is the renewing of the mind. How is it the renewing of the mind when you're baptized with water and go back to uh, sin against the Bible? But go on. Yeah, yeah, no, you're definitely right. Um, yeah, go on. I try to teach. I try to tell my my father, my grandmother that you know about the Sunday worship, just like how you said in one of your sermons. Don't yeah. let your chest get puffed up, and um, you know you got the new truth in you. Now you're ready to go out and tell. You know, and that was definitely me. You know, I was in everybody's face with it because you know it's like a new toy, a new, a new, a new car. You just want to show everybody, you know. Yeah. And um, that's understood. And you was right on, right on the money with that, with the puffing up your chest, got into arguments with my father, and you was right about. I mean, well, the Bible's right. You was just the vessel. 
um, about the father and the son having like disagreements not coming coming together. You yeah. Was, you was, the Bible was right when you said about um, it just gets a little. Um, you were right about the family should be arguing about this. The foe like, shall. This it says when, the, the foe shall be there of their of, of your own household. See, but you're getting all yeah. this. Listen, you're getting all this knowledge, but this is what you have to receive above all. Right? Okay. You have to receive the knowledge of how to actually live with the word now. Understanding the level okay. your family's on without losing them. Right? Yeah, and, and he, like, exactly, yeah. because Christ said, listen, don't cast your pearls before swine, lest they rend you under feet. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Here it is. Here it is. These people may not bother you at all. If you just walk with the word and show an example of how the word is benefiting you, they're watching. But when you try to go ghost busting, you're not battling <laughs> yeah. them. You're battling the spirit who's, who's using them as a host. So understand how to walk with wisdom with this brother. And the best way you can teach them is to show forth the life of Christ that they can see without, without yeah. becoming a taskmaster or lords over God's flock. You cannot be the guy who becomes a Pharisee in your mother home, your sister's home. They didn't, they didn't, they, they didn't invite you over for Bible study or to tell them what they can do in their home. True, true, true. Right? That's so the right, whole right. thing is, right. Paul said you must be able to condescend to the lowest level. That's why Christ was able to operate with publicans and sinners. You think they would want Christ around and every time Christ came around, he told them everything bad about themselves? No. He dealt with them on a level he can communicate with them on. And eventually, and eventually the conscience would prick them. Yeah. Just with the opportunity of being around a righteous man who wasn't judging them. And see, I know where you are because I used to do that and think I smelled the ghost bus and anything. I'm I'm walking around a walking conspiracy. Everything up, hey brother, you see that sign there? You know what that's about? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is listen, you have to listen, ease, just relax a little bit with it. Yeah. Have an opportunity, yeah. have an opportunity to condescend to the lowest level. And be able to see as those you're looking to convert sees without judging all the time, without telling them what they shouldn't be doing. Because what? What that does? That dissolves an opportunity. That dissolves the opportunity yeah. to be around at that moment they need you. <laughs> One day they're going to come to you. And guess what? And I didn't realize until I started dealing with it from that angle, how many people who were actually watching my transformation. <laughs> they expect you to, to me right now. Hey brother, this is why Christ was able to sit with publicans and sinners. The Pharisees like, why are you sitting around with these? He know they doing wrong. And Christ says, well, I'll tell you what, at least they know. They need a physician. You're whole already. You think you you think you all together. Y'all don't need me. I'm here with the people who yeah. know they're doing wrong. But I'm going to have an opportunity to be around them so that when the opportunity comes in their conscience, I will help transform them, convert them, help them. Because what? Sin is a stronghold. It's not just them. Yes, it's it the is. stronghold that's in them that's prohibiting them from actually hearing and changing based on what? Us speaking, talking. Yeah. Right? So it's not them by themselves. It's a stronghold that we have to be patient enough to wait around to help them rid that demon that, that has have them bound in, in certain instances. I can be around my brothers now and other people in my family that I know are doing things that they're struggling with. And, 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 and the whole thing is when I'm around them, brother, 
eventually they'll break down or my one my family would start crying and say you know what man i shouldn't be doing this da da da, da without me saying anything and now yeah. and now th you know what my response now now is how can i help you <laughs> I, I i've been waiting for you to be here how can i help you i'm right the greatest among you shall be your what yeah. your what christ said the greatest among you shall be a what servant Urban. not a pharisee not someone who's looking yeah, to point I out what everyone is doing wrong all right let me get to the next call okay brother all right thank you you welcome great call come on now i got a christian somewhere don't i don't i don't we we have to have a christian somewhere if not, it's okay. Kamar is online. Kamar, 646 area code. How are you, Kamar? Shalom, shalom, elder. Shalom. Yeah, my name is Kamar, as you know. Um, it's the first time calling in. I tried to call in, but it's the first time get you. I'm so happy, man. I'm like a little kid uh, talking to my mother in a long time. And I, I love you, elder. I love you. You're a godsend, man. You're a godsend. Oh, praise I was the most confused time. about six years ago, and you showed me the light, man. God sent you on this earth for a purpose. And I pray he give you everlasting life from now to, to, to lead us to the end. Because he sent you to lead us. I know that. Because there is so much lost sheep that you open their eyes. I know you open my eyes. Mm. There's so much things happen in my life that couldn't ex understand, I can't explain, but watching you, it made me understand. Like, I, I die already, and I always think I was dreaming, or, or, and when you do the topic about it, I see that I die already. And when I tell people before, like people think I was lying, but when you give the topic about it, that book writes long ages about go before I exist. So it showed me that you are, you are you are our leader. You are sent by the Most High to to lead us. And I thank God for you, man, because you opened my eyes. In show, I, I was grow, I grew up in the church. My mother is a pastor, and um, I, I'm a captain for the Bible quiz team. I enter, I win the, the captain, I win regional final, that means I enter the world Jamaica and I win. And I never understand the Bible. Mm. I understand religion. Religion is what I understand then. And when I find out that Jesus' name, it came from my friends. My friends always tell me, because I'm from Jamaica, they always say, Selassie, Selassie. Well, I know Selassie is just a man. So they were saying Jesus is a white man. And uh, um, the, the Bible said, I don't want to sit in this in the scornful of sinner. So they, those are my friends. And to me, you, 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 you're talking bad about God. So I was ready to stop talking to my friends. And it's like I feel lonely because I didn't have no friend like because they're talking about God. And I'm alone in, in New York. So I feel lonely. And I go to an elder friend. And I say to him, say, yo, I feel like, yo, there's something wrong about life. I don't know what it is, man. And I don't think it's church. Because I grew up in church. I know what church feel like. I know what spe I speak in tongues. I know what speaking tongues feel like. I know it, 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 it does seem like that's not it that I want. And he say, yo, just pray. Just pray. And I go to my bed and I pray. I, I have a dream. I have a dream that I was in the desert. And, and when I, I, I dream that he in the desert was us, and it's like we, we were melting. And I was melting too, but a bottle of water fall from the sky. And it fall right in my hand. And I drink the water. When I drink the water, I, I, I feel, I feel quench, my chest quench, I feel good. So I was telling the other, the other people to, yo, drink the water, get some water. If you drink the water, you're going to live. And they wouldn't drink the water. 
and I see they blast up the light. It's like they just blast up and turn fire. And I hear a voice, I'm the living God of Israel. So I wake up and I went, I went on Facebook and I was scrolling and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I was on Facebook scrolling and I look on Facebook, I see a, a, a video say the living God of Israel. So I'm thinking, this is God talking to me. Um, the topic was um, uh, Amen Ra. And they was going into some topic and teach you some things how to make your life better and some things. But, and to me, as I say, I grew up in the church it, 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 and my mother is a pastor. It feel that feel like, like it was witchcraft because it was like you praying to get what you want. You got to do certain things and, and make certain, say certain things. So I didn't, it's like it wasn't, that wasn't God, even though as I wake up, I see that. So I start searching and I start searching more. And I type in Jamaica, the Israelite. And when I type in Jamaica, the Israelite, I see you come up and, he, and the, the video come up, the Benjamite. Um, Jamaica is the Benjamite. So I start watching that video, start watching that video. I know the history of Jamaica because I like to read. So when you start talking about the history and start talking about the Bible, what the Bible says would happen to Benjamin, it made me see who I am now. So I find my place now. So it, it, it made me want to know, okay, who is God now? Because I know I'm Israel. I know I'm a Benjamite. So who is God now? So I, I, I was typing J-O-C-C teaching in who is God. There was no topic as that. I just scroll on, scroll on. I see they say, I am that. I am Ahaya, Asha. And I click on that. And then from there on, I learn and learn. And then you answer everything that I wanted to know from I'm growing up in the church. Because I always ask my mother, oh, the Bible says he's supposed to be like brass that burn chain sign. He got to be black. And my mother says, don't question God. And you break down everything to me. And I want to thank you, man. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, man. I love you. And I want you to live forever and ever, man, and do God's work. Oh, thank you, my brother. I mean, what a call. Thank you, Kumar. I'm going to place you on hold, okay? Okay, brother. All right. Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. I mean, what a call, because that leads us to the next point before i take the uh the next call uh hold on terry i have you next that that leads us to the next point right what is what is the true mission of christ we're taught to go out with tracks convert people into christianity ask if they were saved are they saved or have they received Christ in their life? All this bogus crap that Christians are putting forth as the mission in replace of, to replace Christ's true mission. It's a shame that our people who are God's people have to come to a point to ask him exactly who are we? Who are you? <laughs> okay. That leads us to Christ's true mission. Don't forget, it started out in this particular broadcast where it was proven historically and according to Christ's prophecy that our people, the children of Israel who started off in Jerusalem, would lose our homeland, according to Christ's prophecy, by the hands of the Romans. The Romans would kill off the disciples and reconstruct a new form of Christianity, only hiding their paganism using Christ's name. So they would change Christ's mission for his people. So what is the true mission when someone receives the knowledge of the truth and the true ministry of Christ? What should all churches, all pastors, how should they be proselytizing when converting on the streets or amongst the people within the earth, spreading the gospel? 
Elder Loya, let's get it. Matthew 10, 5 and 6. Saying Matthew chapter 10, verse number 5. Read. These twelve Yeshia sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Come on. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go where? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of of Israel. I would rather you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, how did the Israelites get lost? Deuteronomy 28 and 64 tells us that Israelites for disobedience were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and was meant to serve other nations and other gods, wood and stone. Stone represents predominantly Islam. The wood represents the cross of Talmuz upheld by the Roman Empire. So how can you claim that you can spread that you're bringing people to Christ without doing his first mission? His first mission was to the lost sheep to let them know exactly, exactly who they are and what purpose Christ have for the, these particular people according to prophecy. That's not excluding Gentiles because at the end, when Christ was resurrected and came before the disciples, he, and once the true ministry was established by us, our people, Christ made a decree to go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit. So it's not excluding other people, but it's prioritizing according to Christ's gospel to the Jew first and also the Gentile. Well, the Christian church have excluded the Jew first, which are Israelites and made a ministry strictly for Gentiles without identifying the lost sheep of Israel. And it's a shame our people. And it, it, you know what? I'm glad it's this way because no man of theologian school can state claim to this awakening. I'm glad the most high did it the way he did it folks, <laughs> because that means there's a spiritual intervention going on unseen. When an idea come to you and say, like that sister said earlier, elder lawyer, and that brother say something just came to my mind and I went to the internet and I typed something in and I begin to scroll. No man can take credit for that. <laughs> okay. That's the Holy spirit working to do what to fulfill Ezekiel 37 awakening the valley of the dry bones. So since the Christian church have hid this information, God himself has begun to tap the shoulders of his Israelites all around the earth, letting his people know it's time. The time of the Gentiles have been fulfilled and the lost sheep of Israel have next. And we're, and we're getting this information against all odds. With the deck stacked against us, the Most High is still fulfilling his prophecies within this ministry and within, and even on the outside of us. Don't forget, sometimes I'm asleep, sometimes I'm not doing nothing at all. And the Most High is still using those videos that we did for years, serving him, humbly serving him to answer all the questions the Christian church should have answered. Thank you, other lawyer. I just wanted to put that out there. The true mission. Sure. It's not going out there with tracks asking people, are they saved? You are supposed to bring the truth to the lost sheep of the house of Israel because this world is not going to get right until God's people are right. Ever since we fell, the whole earth been turned upside down. You're not going to fix this with voting or any politics or any policy. This earth is too broken. And the only people who can fix it, Satan, have aimed his, his evil and his conspiracy against. There's no coincidence that there's drugs, guns, religion, all of that concentrated amongst the communities where our people are. That's not a coincidence. That isn't a coincidence. And this earth won't get right until the children of Israel come back to the father. 
The earth is dying and waiting. It's just that so many people believe out there that I'm just one person. What can I do? It's like one person standing in a, an ocean is coming towards you and you're saying, well, what little can I do against this big ocean, this tidal wave? That's what you're thinking. But no, the most high have a certain number, has a certain number that must be sealed. And when we come to that number, there's thousands of angels who operate for us. We're not alone. The host of angels operates for that one individual because those hosts belongs to our savior. We have to stop looking at things from an, an earthy vantage point or disadvantage point. That's, that's what I will put it because we think we're alone. So therefore let someone else do it. No, that's why we have the Academy. That's why we have all that. These guys paying thousands and thousands of dollars to go to a theologian school to only become what? Intellectually dumber when, when it comes to the Bible and Christ's true mission. That's why we make things affordable. That's why we do what we do because we understand that once we get that number, Christ is going to crack that atmosphere. Now there's a few things have to happen. They're looking at three things in particular that must happen. One thing that must happen is the great earthquake that breaks America into three parts. That's one thing that's going to happen. The second thing that must happen in no uncertain order is the war with Iran. The Iran war. The third thing, cashless society, where no man can buy or sell or go to work or do anything unless you can show you have the mark of the beast and the bodies all over the earth with the stuff they took have already been prepped to receive the technology. The nanoparticles that's going through the bloodstreams of people right now is prepping the body neuro neurologically and otherwise to receive the next step in this. And at that time, the whole earth will be turned against those who can see. And only Christ could save us out of such a time. I'm going to leave it there. Hebrew and Bible Academy, y'all. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Terry, the floor is yours. Shalom, Elder Shalom. Shalom, how are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm blessed. The floor is yours. Christ is, yes, Christ is the um, truth. Christianity as an institution yes, has lied, but go on. Um, oh man, Christianity is a lie, not just a lie, it's a drug too. Um, I, I, I wanna, I have a comment, and I just wanna, I have a question too. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm from Haiti. Um, okay. I came to the state when I was, when I was about 13 years old, born in a church. Um, my mother brought me here, and we've been going to this church. Um, but, um, in 2014 and I, uh, actually wanted to give my life to God and I changed and, you know, I didn't have nowhere else to go, but the Christian church. Okay. And that's where I got baptized. Yeah. So that's where I got baptized in. And that's, that's another question. That's one question I had, but the guy before me asked you about the baptism, you know, and you answered it and you made it clear for me. And not only that, the other day. Um, the Lord revealed to me that I do need to get rebaptized because I was baptized in that Christian church. You know what I'm saying? Because I, um, yeah. So yeah. Um, long story short. Um, basically that. Um, I kind of like grew up uh, because uh, uh, I've been in that church forever. So I grew up uh, 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 like a uh, uh, um how you say that like a, a good a strong relationship with that church with the people in the church yeah. and but um yeah so last year um well in 2020 when the pandemic hit and i decided I, I was leaving i told the pastor and everything and so now i've been in the truth ever since then um i'm looking back yeah christianity is a a, um, a lie and the thing is our people they don't even know that it's a it's a stronghold on them because uh, let me tell you what happened when I got when I got baptized in the church. 
um, the first thing I did, and the Lord was revealing to me how this this Christianity movement is a, is 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 not of God at all. Um, the first thing I did, I went on my Facebook page and I changed my um my cover picture to uh to white Jesus holding the the, the earth. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that picture. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, not, but go on. Yeah, yeah, but like the most I was revealing to me, he was like subconsciously like it's there you know what i'm saying that seizure boys here that white image is there yeah. you may not they may not yeah they may not say it they may not knowing it but like deep down inside subconsciously is there because when i did that i didn't even think i didn't even think about it you know what i'm saying mm. i just knew like that was just jesus you know what i'm saying i just boom i just put it in my now when i'm in the truth i'm looking back out the most i've shown me like wow yeah you was yeah i was like yeah i was lost you know, and I want to thank you, man. Like you, GOCCI, like I say, like I've been telling everyone, I've been putting everybody on you, man. You guys, man, you guys have the spirit, man. You guys are in the truth, man. Um, This brother I work with, man, I was trying to put him on you guys, but he, and he was, because the first day I went to my that job and I saw him, he had his fringes on and I was happy, man. I was like, oh, man, another brother in the truth. And, you know, then we started talking and then he mentioned what camp he was subscribed to. I was like, oh, man, because I already know his beliefs. He he, he, he subscribed to IUIC or whatever. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I know those guys, they don't even believe in baptism. So um, I was like, so he brought me in his car. We was talking. I guess he was trying to, like, convert me, like, to IUIC, blah, 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 because he was like, yeah, you don't have to get baptized. Christ didn't baptize. So I sent him your video the other day. He was like, oh, man, man, I'm good, bro. I don't believe in – I watched GLCC a uh, um, long time ago. I don't believe in that, blah, blah, blah. It's not for me. I was like, wow, okay, yeah, all right. So whatever. Well, but, I guess, um, I'll tell yeah. you what. Once you, once you send him those videos, you don't got to worry about mm -hmm. him trying to say anything else to you about it. Right, like, right, right. Like, right, like right. what you were concerned right, about exactly. at, fir at first, once right. you see those videos, automatically, mm -hmm. they're automatically taught, yo – don't even take it in. Don't even don't even look at it. Run. Right, man. And, and that, I'm, I'm, that listen, video I'm, listen, is listen. so because it's thoroughly broken down. The oh bottom, man, let the, me the, tell you, that video is. Then, listen, let me say this. I'm gonna let you say your point of what that video is. But mm -hmm. anyone that'll tell you not to do what Christ instituted right. with the disciples, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how strong they teach. That's antichrist. Mm -hmm. right, why, right, right, why right. not do it just because he did it why would right. you be adamant right. against something right. to try exactly. to prove it wrong exactly. that, and, and, right. but yet you'll claim Christ is the one you serve but go on right 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 no the, what I was trying to say is the way you broke that down is like if anyone don't get it I don't under, like I don't know like <laughs> I don't know how you don't get that <laughs> You know, it's just the way you break it down. It's just like if you don't receive that, that mean it like, I guess it really wasn't for you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I just really want to say thank you, man. Like I've watched pretty much all your videos. It's very informative, man. I've been in the truth, like you said. I do really get rebaptized, like you was telling the other guy. When I got baptized into that church, I was still eating pork. I was still, you know, I was still not keeping the Sabbath. You know, so, yeah. um. Yeah, um, I do need to get rebaptized. And another question I have, um, like I do, I play, I play um, instrument for that church. I play um, music. I used to play music for them, so I love. Okay, what left, what do you play? What do you play? I I play a keyboard. Yeah. Okay, keyboard. let me let, let me let me let me drop something on you, man. How old are you? Uh huh. I'm 32 years old right now. 32. Uh mm huh. -hmm. I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, wh where do you live? Um, Lakeland, Florida. You live in Florida. Let me tell you this, young man. The Bible says um, that we cannot be over righteous in certain okay. matters. Now, I will never dissuade someone from their convictions when it comes to. Uh, the sacrifice you would make for Christ in this walk. But I'm uh -huh. going to tell you, as we come closer, brother, you, all of us must become wiser. 
mm-hmm, in right. our in our understanding, right? Mm-hmm. And I would say, yes, please, please use this as an opportunity to not judge a, a matter, but an opportunity to sit in good faith with that pastor. Mm-hmm. In good faith. Because honestly, when you see people, you know you're playing the music and all that, that actually mm-hmm. triggers an emotion where they're all up in it and you can't help but feel guilty. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so I understand exactly. that aspect, knowing the power of music. Right. That's And that's my question. Like, yeah. um, I've been... Like doubting whether shall I still, you know, because I had love. I love and they begged me to come back because I love because of the reason why I was trying to keep the law. I told them, man, you know, I got to keep the Sabbath. I don't believe in Sunday church um, worship anymore. So I love. And then like they replaced me with somebody else. But that person ended up leaving and they was paying him. When I was there, they wasn't paying me. I didn't want no money from them or anything because I was doing it out of love with my heart. But they got a new guy that was paying him. So I was like, so they begged me to come back. I say, I was paying him, so I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna make y'all paid. So um that's the only reason why I came no. back because they didn't have nobody in. Yeah. And I grew up in that church. Yeah. And so out of love, no. so I wanted no. to come back now. Well this the- is well, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call you and we can talk about it. Mm-hmm. But you can't okay. be over judgmental in matters and and spontaneous. Right, right spontaneously make a decision right. if there's an opportunity there. There's a lot of people in that church that because of the relationship you develop, don't forget, Paul was a Pharisee. Mm-hmm. Right. And, it, and there was never an opportunity in which he couldn't, there was never an opportunity broken in which th- that, mm-hmm. would pro- that would prohibit him from having right. Pharisees see Christ. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so right, right, I right. would say in good faith, instead of no, 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 this is the situation. I did develop relationships that I believe came through Christ. Good people who have helped and shared with me outside of that. Mm-hmm. I believe that there's honest people who went to church and don't even know any better, but that's the only way they know to serve right. like, like I once did. Right. Right. But, right. but, but try to right. be patient and use that relationship that you have with that mm-hmm. pastor to say in good faith, this is not well, about you, well, tr- you trying to convince me of anything. Let's have a discussion and I'm going to show you how I can, I- I'll give you some insight on how to deal with that conversation, but all right, I'll give you the last word and I have, I wrote your phone number down so I can always call you offline. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. No, nah, right. I was, I, nah, I was saying that me and the pastor, we don't really like, I talked to you like a couple of like weeks ago about the, how, He's the one that um that had the doctor that came in that was trying to um the get juice? the congregation to take the vaccine. Yeah, the Jews, right? And that's right. another thing. That's yeah, another so thing. Me, I don't understand how any pastor who claimed to have the faith of Christ and God would institute a political gender within their church without checking with the Most High first to see if right, this is right, what he right. wants, or 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 promoting a medical procedure in a church. To right. a, to advise people to take you know a med- he, medical procedure. That's that, man, that's insane. But go on. That's what that's what I said. But he told me that I'm not a theologian or 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 a doctor, so I don't have I don't have no say so in that matter. You know. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Based on the based on the detailed information you have divulged, I would say, uh-huh. hey, you've made it. You've made the right decision. See you. I need the data to be able to assess the scenario to say, okay, you made the right decision. And I would suggest any, any, uh, further interactions or correspondence with him should be over the phone, Uh (laughs) over the phone or video, (laughs) you know, outside of that building because, because the decisions he's making, he has made as a pastor, can put right. the whole congregation at risk. All right? right. So, all right? Right, right, right. Well, right. thank you, my brother. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Elder. All right. Bless you, and I'll, I'll call you, Terry. All right. All right. All right. There go, you. Terry. And I was hoping to get some Christians around here, man. 
Maybe uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Do they hear me? I know. I know there's thousands of people in here. If anyone have any questions concerning doctrine, it's time right now. Uh, we have uh, Zayaqua has a comment. Zayaqua. I hope I'm saying. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Zayaqua. Zayaqua. <laughs> Zayaqua. Okay. All right. The floor is yours. All right, Shalom. How are you? Shalom. I'm blessed by the best, and his name is Ahaya. And a, and and the weekend of the 19th of March will be the Passover. The weekend well, of the 19th. I'm just telling everybody out there, it's going to be serious. It's going to be serious. Pittsburgh, PA. More details I'll be discussing for the Passover and the Academy this coming Sabbath. So be there. But go on, sister. Floor is yours, Zayaqua. All right. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to make a quick comment. On All right. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Floor is yours. Okay. And I just wanted to make a quick comment. You had What you had said earlier about needing to cast off the lies of the Christian church, that is a true statement. And I've noticed that because we are, in fact, an emotional people, the enemy can easily bend us to both our own will and their will with the right ammunition, which I've noticed is mostly the allure that you can worship God and also do whatever you want. And we spent so much time fighting for liberal and basically invisible rights that when people went to church, they were fed what they, what they wanted to hear, like prosperity, stuff like that. And you had also mentioned um, how black people are like kind of dispersed among like different religions. And a lot of the black Christians that I used to know in the mainstream Christian church, they either are with this church, they don't go to church anymore, or they practice witchcraft of some sort, mm. which I have, and I have tried to talk to some of them and say, oh, well, do you know about this, this, and this, or this, that, and the other thing? And they're like, Oh well, if that's if that's what you think is the right thing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my spirituality and manifestations and my crystals, and I'm like, Ugh. manifestation and crystals. And, yes, sir. Okay. But a, lo a lot of things I noticed was people in into using crystals to manifest good things for themselves. Okay. All right. And, yeah, they're manifesting a demon, but go on. Yeah, <laughs> and I also noticed that the Christian church, especially the ones that I used to go to, and there were a lot of them, they were notorious for using Paul to trump Christ. So instead of using, instead of talking about the laws and, and commandments in the Old Testament that Christ also followed, they would say things in the scriptures like Romans 6 and 14 and say, oh, we don't have to, like you said, we don't have to follow the laws anymore. But then those same people will turn around and complain that people are leaving the church, going out into the world, or coming into the church and being immodest. And come to think about it now, my first like real Bible that I had when I was still in the Christian church only had about sixteen or seventeen like actual highlighted scriptures in it. Yeah. And I had that Bible for seven years up until I left the Christian church entirely. And all of those highlighted scriptures were in the New Testament. And then I got, mm. a, and then as I was getting into being with GOCC, I got a lot of um, following the whole Bible <laughs> makes me a cult member. What? what say, hold hold, hold like up. Me. What makes you a cult member? Following the whole Bible. Following the whole Bible makes you a what? A cult member. That's what I've been told by people who don't want to listen to me. Hey, sister, while you're here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show brothers and sisters an example of what you just said. We talk about this elder lawyer in the academy sometimes when it comes to the modern day Christianity. Some of the uh, a lot of people don't understand the doctrine that's behind what she just said, trying to use Paul's writings to trump Christ. When it should be the other way around, because the people who are teaching Paul don't even understand Paul. His, his writings are hard to be understood. 
They're taught in the theologian school to go to Paul's writings to say the law is done away with, which is utterly ridiculous. When Paul tell you straight up that you don't know sin unless you have what? Unless you've recognized the law. How would you know sin without the law? And he consent that the law was good, but they leave that out. When you look at your screen here, there's a, there's a uh, philosophy called Marcionism. Marcionism is the doctrinal system of a sect of the second and third centuries AD, accepting some parts of the New Testament, but denying Christ a corp corporality and humanity of condemning the creator of the Old Testament. So under Marcionism, they made the God of the Old Testament into a bad guy that can now be what? Ignored. They made two separate gods now. Not to follow the law, but there's bad stuff in the Old Testament. Only follow Christ and the ideology that's being taught through the Christian church because the old stuff doesn't matter anymore. It's called Marcionism. That's where they got that particular uh, 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 doctrine to begin to skirt around Christ, to use the misunderstanding of Paul's writings to teach Marcionism. Okay. So I wanted to put that out there and you learn more about that. Even within the Academy. Also, there's, there's a philosophy. There's a mindset behind them teaching the laws done away with. Why would you go through such extent to try to push lawlessness? If you're of God, why would you even try to put in the imagination of people that it's okay to sin against God? <laughs> if you're not the devil, un unless you're the devil, excuse me. Who would say with all the laws in the Bible, let me find the precept that tell people do as thou wilt a satanic philosophy. If you give people the opportunity to continue their life as is in sin and still get the kingdom of heaven, what do you think they're going to choose? They're going to choose to continue. the. If people can stay the way they are without repenting and still get the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> right? The majority of people would say, well, okay, <laughs> So this is the danger of modern day Christianity by pushing the laws done away with. They're telling people who need structure, who need discipline that, that they shouldn't, that they don't have to follow the law. And if they do, they're not really in Christ. That's Marcionism. All right, go ahead, go ahead, sister. Um, and I had also, um, a lot of things that I noticed that were different about the Christian church, well, one of the specific things was how councils worked. I noticed that was a major, like, that's like a big thing here, like how we have in, Pro in like Proverbs 11, 14, about how counselors, the safety and counselors, and a lot of things told in councils and like the Christian church, they become open secrets. Hmm. And I was thinking, I was thinking about that a lot. I've been thinking about it a lot recently because, at, like, growing up, he, like hearing, well, well, like, I, whispers sister, I think that's own. more, I think that's more of a societal thing and a, a people thing than it is a church. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> you make sense. I mean, no matter where you are, when people hear something juicy, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? They have the propensity to to talk about it or to, you know, that's just, that's just what it is. That's, that's a people thing. And that's why even in the new Testament in the church, uh, uh, Peter and others, Timothy and others were reprimanding. Uh, I mean, Paul was reprimanding the church. Even when it look when you look at Timothy of people being tattlers going house to house saying things, they not, they, they shouldn't say concerning their own household this was happening in the first church before the Romans destroyed us. So that's a people thing there. We can't just put that on the Christian church. 
no, yeah, I, I understand. All right. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. When people get juicy stuff, they like to talk about it. I mean, not to say it's right, but <laughs> the church was being reprimanded uh, uh, for that. That's just our people. Well, thank you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bless Shalom. you. All right. Shalom. All right. Sharon has a question and comment. 609 from New Jersey. How are you, Sharon? Shalom, brother. Can you hear me? I'm blessed by the best. Shalom. How you doing, Sharon? I can hear you loud and clear. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, just at first, first, I'd just like to send my condolences on the loss of your mom. Thank and you. And I've been following uh, your program. I am an ex-Christian and also an ex-Jehovah Witness. I left the church. Uh, I was raised up in the church, but I left the church because I was uh, just done with the nonsense. And Jehovah Witnesses won me over. Uh, they taught that everybody was going to go into God's kingdom uh, hand in hand, and we're going to love each other. And it was such a beautiful story. Mm -hmm. But they also taught that the Messiah was a white man. Of course. And I, uh, one day I was on Facebook and I saw uh, a brother make a comment and he said, we're Israel. Correct. So I said, wait, this, my, this was my second time hearing this. If you were descendants of slaves, you're Israel. Yeah. And I uh, went and I said, you know what? I have to uh, research this because this is my second time hearing that we're Israel. So I researched it, and I came across a video on YouTube called Hitting Blacks in the Bible. Okay. And I, I played that video, and it went into Deuteronomy. And, it, and when he, uh, I followed along with him, and when he got to Deuteronomy 28, I think it's 68. Yes. And it said that we came, we were, we were scattered on ships. That sealed it for me. Yep. I said, that's us. Yep, he and was right. I cried for brother, I cried for six months. Mm. I cried. I think I, I prayed to God and I said, I'm sixty two years old. Why so long to find this truth? And but then I realized it wasn't time for me to find it, but I found it before I closed my eyes. And I am so grateful, and I follow you, and I love the teachings. And I have one question, and uh, something I never heard you speak on: um, women and pants. Is that are we supposed to come out of pants? Okay, the Bi a, okay the uh, Bi the Bible says that you are not supposed to wear what pertaineth to a man, and a man is not to put on woman's clothing. Okay. Now, pant, oh. pants in of itself, okay, isn't, mm -hmm. isn't a sin because there are women pants, okay? But the women pants okay. aren't supposed to be what? They're supposed to be modest. They're not supposed to show another man, yes. a, you know, another man outside of your husband, the curvatures and all that of you're not supposed to be showing that publicly because it can cause a man to lust. Yeah, but there are woman pants there. And there are things that uh, women used to wear under their skirts and dresses that were pants. Okay. So, but the whole thing is, yeah. and there are women pants out there that if a man put on, you know, you'll have people looking at them yeah. sideways who are heterosexual. So it's more yes, so yes. not putting on the clothing of the opposite sex. But we're supposed to be modest. Okay. We're not supposed to have no tight fit and stuff and all that all out there. But a woman no, has... No, I don't do that. A woman have defined clothing for them as women. There's pants women wear that I wouldn't walk outside with, with without being questioned. So... It's talking about me because you don't, you can't find the word pants in the Bible. Yes. Okay. You can't find it there. So where there's no law, there's no transgression. But I believe that we all understand what modest apparel is according to God. 
Yes. And we yes. all understand what women pants are and what men pants are. Right. So it comes a time yeah. where we have yeah. to, we have to use logically our common sense along with our conscience to know that what we put on makes a statement without without conversation. So I believe okay. that I, yeah. I believe wholeheartedly that women know that they supposed to wear modest apparel, not showing their shape and dresses and skirts usually does the trick. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. But, that, so exactly. That was my <laughs> exactly. See, see, but I have to be careful because why? Where there's no law, there's no transgression. And you have to leave space for someone to consciously come to the knowledge on their own to understand the way I'm looking, okay. the way I'm looking is sexually attracting other people. Okay. Okay. So yes. women, women okay, have to be mindful. Women, women must be more mindful. Men should be mindful of that too. But women use the wiles of their outward appearance to lure men consciously. Yes. Right now, it was a yes. time where women used to wear modest apparel and were wives and all that, and could still lure men. When we get to that. <laughs> that'll be a good place when a woman don't have to do all that sexual stuff yes. to right. actually gain the man who, who they'll, who, who would be with them all the days of their life. Usually when a woman is dressed a certain type of way, a man is with her for that specific reason. And I don't, yes. and I don't think that'll benefit a woman long term. Okay. Yes. All right. This is what I try to. Yeah. When I preach to my granddaughter. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully, uh, she'll get it. Yeah, because younger girls and others, they confuse the right attention with sexual attention. They think it's one and one and yes. of the same. It's not. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sister. And we'll talk about okay, that in the academy a little bit. Now, are you in the academy this Sunday or no? Be 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 honest. Uh, I was I was in the one before that. Okay, all my right. My first one. Well, thank you. And I I I I'm gonna go and uh, probably sign up for this one. Well, it's up to you, sister. Starts, but thank you, uh, thank you for participating. The first week starts Sunday, but it's up to you. You've been there before. I appreciate Sunday. it, but hey, it's going to be a real something this Sunday. So either way, we thank you for oh, your. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we thank you for the enrollment, uh, the past enrollment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you welcome. welcome. Okay. Bless you. Bye bye. All right. Okay, author, you're up. Hello. Hi, author. Um. Well, may the Most High bless you. I really appreciate your ministry. Yeah, and um, I'm I'm a white guy, and I'm coming out of the church. Okay. And um, I guess I've been blessed because you know I've probably been I grew up that way ever since I can remember, and, and all the churches I went to, you know, except for the Sabbath, they really do the Ten Commandments. I guess nine they try. Okay. But if you seriously think about it, the first three are hard to do if you don't do the fourth so they did they did the best they could you know and and they they were upstanding people in the community taught good. good things you know don't don't let stuff on your tv that's not appropriate you yeah. know marriage all that and yeah. um but i i i was homeless for a while i i've had a pretty rough life and a really long testimony and um, I did a discipleship program at a gospel mission that didn't take funding from the state or from the federals. Yeah. And we had some good pastors. And, and instead of doing 12, I did 20. And I found the classroom and uh, the strong concordance and everything. And um, I, I, the guy graduated in a 12-month program before me got like 20 credits. 
19 credits, I think, okay. at an accredited college for what we learned there. Okay. And and then I had a personal experience with God. Um, my pastor was from Fiji, and it wasn't a normal church. And um, the Lord put on my heart the Sabbath. And I don't know why. He just put it on my heart so hard. And so with my new strongs and all that, I... Um, I, I went into the Sabbath and I learned that was right. And um, so, you know, I tried, I've been to, you know, a, a few colored churches. I've been everywhere looking for the truth. And like I said, I'm blessed because I went to really good outstanding communities. And um, I've never been to a church that, that didn't teach <laughs> proper stuff as far as not the food laws and the, the feasts, and I'm into that all now, too. Okay. And, oh, oh, and, and oh, so hold, the hold, Lord's hold. been leading me. Hold up, Arthur. How old are you? I'm thir- 56. 56. Uh, yes. There's a few things I want to say before you finish off, and that, then we'll go to the next. Then, then I'll hear what you have to say because I have other callers to take. I couldn't help but notice that you said you went to a few colored churches. Yes, I I don't want it. I I that's I don't know um, where I came from. We don't judge on skin or race. No, no, we no. Judge no. On character. no, no. Listen to what I'm saying to you, though. I know, but I can't help but correct you there. Colored implies that people were white. And we were colored in. All right. So I have to correct you there because that's, that's incorrect. All right. There is no colored people in the Bible. We're the children of Israel. Right. All right. So you, you came. Is there white people? Are there white people within the children of Israel? No, no, no. Are, Are there white people? Period. Are there white people in our church? No, no, in the world. There is no white people. Well, you know, the Lord led I'm, me not, to you not, on not, TV. Not, and not, not, I, listen, now, listen to me. Listen to me, though. It's okay. I'm going to, I'm, I'm conversing with you. And I, I wanted a Christian to call in. Because what we have to do is we have to correct some of the verbiage that keeps us divided. That, right. that Christ doesn't want. And... The whole thing is, it's time that we learn again. That colored, colored is a, colored is offensive. Okay. So is white. Okay. So I won't call you white, but. Okay. Okay. I won't call you white. We can call it what? So-called white people. Because don't forget, we didn't name white people, white people, white the white authority or the so-called European authority deemed themselves white and pure. They told us to call them that. We didn't name ourselves. Okay. Because. All right. So I'm just saying. This is real important. I'm saying it's real important that we dialogue because we're we're coming into a place where under the Joe Biden's administration, they are pushing now, of course, he's under Satan or whatever the case might be. The others are Um, listen, 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 (laughs) listen, they're pushing critical race theory and they're trying to push that in the church Right. and through crit, because we now understand the truth of who we are. We're not colored. We're not Negro. We're not black. We're the children of Israel. According to God, we're God's chosen people because of doing that. They're going to try to incinerate things by moving it from the religious realm to the social engineering of our children. And the next phase of this is to teach white children to be sorry for what happened and that they're bad people inherently by white. (laughs) They're bad people inherently being white children because they wanted to call themselves white. Right. And they're, and they're, they must be more considerate and feel guilty for what happened to black people, which is dangerous because they're going to teach black people, black children, that the uh, the white privilege is what oppressed them 
And this is why they're in the condition today when God put us in this condition. And by doing so, hope to ferment a cataclysm between blacks and whites who are ignorant following the theory. Right. Okay. So, right. The- See, so I wanted to answer your question yeah. on when the white guys call in. I heard that on the show. When the white guys call in and then you were you were pretty uh emotional and and i'd like to answer that because you you know i come from a place where i i've been in a lot of different areas i've been preaching the bible in meth cults and gypsy joker biker gangs i've had people after me that that wanted to hurt me for a long time before i died oh yeah by the and way the lord kept me hey, sir, through all that I, I was, okay by and the way so hey, hold, hold be, because nine out of ten times okay. that i watch your video yeah i watch your video because the lord brought me to you and i never knew that that you guys were israelites i i had no clue and, and the lord connected in my spirit yes that's right listen but nine out of 10 videos, I got to sit through the white man's got his foot on my neck. The white guy's got this. And, you know, we, we, we don't judge that way. Um, not, not 95% of the people I've been around in 56 years judge that way. But every time I watch a video, I get that. And I'd like to share your videos, but someone that might not have the Lord, I don't take offense, but someone coming newer than I am, they, they might, cause you know, I've helped so many people of all races and I've been hurt by a lot of people of, okay. of races well, and, author, author, and, and it's just, author, let me make it clear. <laughs> let, let, let me make it clear to you though. All right. When I speak in general, when it comes to my people, those that are viewing the video know it's generalizations. So, right. And, and when I talk about what the Arabs are doing, I know Arabs that are good people, but I can speak in general. Okay. And what I'm going to ask you to do is be patient as a believer in Christ. I'm a, I'm going to ask you, listen to what I'm asking you to do. Author be patient to work through generalizations, knowing that you're not, no, no, listen, listen, knowing that you're not like those who would do evil okay. against God's so people. I'm not like, so, so, so listen, I, I let, don't I, ever call I'm you saying. guys covered, but I didn't know what to call you because on the video I was just watching, you called my kind of white man. Okay. So when, uh, listen, listen, you. sir. Right. Okay. Li- <laughs> all, all, all the listen, I rather get into more media detail here. All in all, when you, when you called in, you said I'm a white guy. Right. That's because that's what you called me on the video. Oh, well, okay. Okay. That's what okay. You relate all right. To me as. Okay. So you were being, so, so, you, so it's oh, okay oh. for you to call me a white guy. Okay. Listen. And, and so that's why I told you I was a white guy. Okay. So you were being, I, I'm trying to make a couple points here also. Okay. So let me speak and I'll let you speak. So you weren't being, you were being disingenuous and facetious when you said white guy. But I guess kind of facetious, but more in a teaching way. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. So that means you came, you came in. Okay. You came in dishonest because why? Listen to me clearly, Arthur. When I say something. No, I, no, I wasn't coming in dishonest. Not, You're wrong. Okay. I got to correct that. I came in as you called me. Okay. So you I'm said a white guy, right? And okay. So I came right. in as a white guy. Okay. Arthur, I'm going to put I you. I guess that's what you affiliate Arthur, with. Arthur, I'm going to put you on hold because before I can get out what I need to say, you're speaking. So if we're going to dialogue. You know, have to, we're going to dialogue so that we can edify for the people out there. And if I'm talking and you're talking, there's no edification. We're wasting time. Okay. I got to say one thing though. You said I came in dishonest, but I didn't. I came in affiliating myself with the way you put me out there. 
It wasn't dishonest. Okay. So let oh wait, let's do it this I, way. So oh, I had to say oh, that. Okay, so let me say that, this. Correct, yeah, I apologize. Okay, so let me say this. Thank you. Thank you for that author. Because what I'll do is when I teach and talk, I'll be more conscious. I'll be more conscious of those who believe in Christ and that are trying to do the right things who are so-called whites to not, to not let this gospel and what I'm teaching become a stumbling block to those in Christ who would come in who, you. who are Gentile. So I didn't mean to offend you Thank and I you. apologize if, if, if me teaching did that. Okay. I will be more conscious of that. Well, no, no, it's not that you're offending me. But others I might try and share you with might okay. get offended. Okay. Right. But, but, and so, okay. so I got a, so I've got a question. Yeah. I've got a lot of questions and, and the, you know, your teachings are more towards Israelites than Gentiles. And, um, well, that's, that's I've incorrect. Got a lot of questions like this one. Listen, and listen, I've listen. tried to, uh, listen, listen. That's incorrect. I'm not, I'm not going to allow you to make incorrect statements. Okay. That's incorrect. You're not listening good enough. Hmm. So I'm not going to allow you to do that. Because when you listen to, when you listen to our teachings, it's all inclusive. And there's, let me tell you, there's not a so-called white person in this church. Male or female can say that when, when they're with me and around me, that they are treated any differently than any other person that's in this church. Not one. Now, 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 now listen, the reason why I call you so-called white or white, because why? If I said Esau or Edom, I would be a barbarian to you because the people out there who identify as white people on their job applications have no idea who Esau is because Esau have hid his name out of the earth. Okay. Right. But still, well, I didn't know I was Esau I'm, until you, <laughs> of course, of course. So if I speak in another language, I'll become a barbarian. If I say white people know what I'm talking about. When I say black, they know what I'm talking about, but I, I make it my position as a teacher to edify so that when it's all over, even though I'm speaking a language that we all understand, those who listen to this long term in good faith will know who we're talking about according to the names within the Bible itself. And at the end of the day, it's what God called us and our part and our place in prophecy as two separate races and also out of those races us coming together under the spirit of Christ to fight evil. All of those narratives, right. all of those narratives play in all together, not one against another, not one over the other. It's through the Holy Spirit how that whole thing culminates into Christ, Christ's purpose for us, all right? So when I teach of Israelites and the promise to Israelites, it's not racist against Gentiles even though they may perceive it that way because so-called white people were never taught in a church in which they didn't feel the need to have the authority, the authoritative position. And that's usually the offense when people are looking at it, who've always been in position of authority, not seeing themselves there. That's not my fault, but that's, but that's something that all so-called white people who receive the gospel must go through. And because that's right. way, that's way less than what we as a people had to go through. I wish we only had to deal with the terms we're being called. All right. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a place you on hold offer. And guess what? I receive you as my brother because you are. And I receive you as my brother and the teacher to me. Exactly. And beyond my black, I, listen, listen, beyond my so-called black skin as an Israelite. In the spirit, if you are in Christ, we are brothers. I have no ax to grind right. against you. And I want to say this to others out there. 
I have nothing against white people. No white person. Okay. I'd like to say one thing before we go, though. You have the last word. Okay. As far as the drugs and the holding down, us also are in that. We might not be in the ghetto, but we're stuck. I was a poor boy. My grandma raised 12 on her own, couldn't get, get no help because my grandpa broke his back out logging wood. Okay, and, um, author, 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 author. Of stroke, hey, the author, 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 listen to what I'm saying. Our communities too. Our okay. Drugs are- okay, author, you're not listening. It's okay. So what I'm going to do, author, I'm going to take down your number. You know, I know people broke their back and things goes on in your community and all that. And, but I apologize. I must move the conversation along. All right. But I do have your number and I will be mindful of who you send the video to. All right. Not to offend in word, because that's not my, that's not our intentions at all. Okay. Author, I'm going to place you on hold. All right, we have Calvin has a comment nine two zero area code. Hello, how you doing? How you doing? Good. I'm Judah. I'm happy about that. Okay, you blessed by the best. Let's talk. Okay, um, I got two issues I want to tell you about. Okay. One of them is I wish you guys would get a app um, that I can um, get your own things on. I would love that. Okay, let me write this down. The Gather of Christ Church needs an app. <laughs> yep, you need an app. Okay. You, you, you definitely need an app because you know what? To access your old um, your old stuff, I, it's hard to... I know you have a way of doing it now on a different thing other than uh, YouTube, but it'd be easier to um, access it on an app. Second then, of all, I have a cousin who has a doctorate yeah, and I like you to contact him. Um, of you know, like Dr. King, he's got one of those doctors in uh, theology. Okay, he's out in Virginia, and you know we're going to have to turn him around just a little bit, you know. And my he, last issue, I'm saying, is, I'm, I'm saying, have, have have the brother with the doctorate. Have he seen our videos? Um, I will be seeing him this weekend because we're going to go to the same funeral. So okay, um. Um, I'm going to try to get them to get to your videos and stuff like that. So, And um, just like the other callers, I've been uh, listening to you for a long time, so I really appreciate you, uh, who you are. And I wanted to tell you, I'm in that place called Kenosha. And when you get them on, when you see, start seeing your um, schools all over the place, start right here in Kenosha. Okay. Okay. Where are you from again? Kenosha. Kenosha. Okay. In Osha, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You know all the stuff that went on this, um, last summer? Yeah. With Kyle Rittenhouse and stuff? Yeah. I got you. Yeah, so um, you, you need a church there. I, uh, you were saying that you had to be um, baptized once you come into this too. Yeah. Well, I've been baptized twice, and um, I'm still trying to get it right. But um, I do have some pretty good knowledge, so I just want you to... Um, I'm going to have to figure that whole um, getting baptized where there ain't no place to get baptized. I'm one of those, what do you call one of those um, internet um, learners. Okay, it's no problem because regionally we can set up a baptism for you. Uh, we're already working on that now so that you'll, you'll, you'll be attending a church within that region who can schedule the baptism for you. So we'll be working on that. And you guys, and you guys are going to be out on the streets, you said? I beg your pardon? All over the, you did say that you guys are going to be all over the streets, right? I mean, meaning yeah. that you're going to be opening up, you're going to have people out here teaching, and um, I wouldn't be, I would like to be part of that. I got to get into your uh, academy, that's yeah. for sure. Well, to get in that academy, I have your number. I'm going to call you about your cousin, and we're going to schedule a baptism and let you know the future for. Uh, congregating with the church even though we're not in when in your particular area there's a lot of places we oh, have yeah, to get I, know, to hey, listen, I know that <laughs> i know you ain't here but oh, okay you gotta hurry up and get here <laughs> oh, I'm, brother i'm coming don't worry about it all right <laughs>
All right. All right. I'm gonna let I'm gonna yield I'm gonna yield and let you do what you gotta do and uh, get in contact with me, please. Thank you. I appreciate you, my brother. All right. Okay. No. Okay. We have Cora. Cora has a comment. Hello, I'm a I just uh, I'm a farmer, Christian, and just want to let everybody know what the church failed to tell me. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've been in the church since um, 2013 when a farmer um, coworker sent me a video, the 12 Lost Tribes Found. But just before that, I was uh, I was still you know, pretty much in the Christian church. But, you know, the, as you know, those Christian churches, they don't talk about demons and spirituality and everything. I learned about the spiritual world uh, when the same uh, co-worker had a book, and then she let me read her book called the, He Came to Set the Captives Free. It was about um, a, a Midwest doctor who was bringing a woman out of witchcraft, and she described in the book, her experiences, her supernatural experiences she had. And then uh, after learning, reading that, I read a book called Pig in the Parlor about this one man who was uh, doing deliverance of people. And so I had kind of, you know, written about the spiritual world. Well, my youngest uh, daughter had a son, and he had this uh, such a bad temper. He was getting in trouble, getting, ex- getting expelled from school all the time, and she was kind of running out of schools to put him in, to enroll him in. So I decided to call uh, this one friend and, and a former neighbor who was a Baptist minister to talk to him about, you know, handling how to handle, you know, the, uh, the I, I recognized that these were demons, that, uh, the, a demon of uh, anger that in the child there. And so I kind of called him for some spiritual guidance. Okay. Well, but talking to him, and he just kind of him hauled around and never gave me any clear uh, directions or anything. He, well, you just have to pray and do, do, and blah, this and that. And, uh, so after the end of the conversation, uh, I came away with still nothing, no information that I could really use. And then uh, my grandson's uh, mother was also a friend of his stepdaughters. And so this has got back to me that. I was really off the chain. Yeah, the, my, my, my daughter told me, said, yeah, uh, Mr. Martin, Reverend Martin said, your mama is really off the chain. And so I'm like, he thinks I'm off the chain for even bringing up the subject. Mm. And he never, he was, and I'm like, oh, well. I said, well, he's a Baptist minister, and mostly Baptist ministers, they don't bother going to seminaries. They don't uh just get up and start preaching. I said, well, I just have to, you know, put that <laughs> I said, you know, like I said, you know, the, the Christian church, they don't teach you anything about spirituality. They don't even discuss demons or anything like that. And you say that to somebody else, they talk about, oh, I don't believe in demons, you know. So that's where I was, you know. That's what I feel that's, that's where the Christian church failed me. Okay. Well, I think we have a Christian pastor who got who have their hand raised? So I I'm gonna place you on hold. I'll see you there too, okay, sunshine. Let's hear what he's got to say. Uh, oh yeah, let's hear what he has to say. I think a pastor Mike is here. Where is he? A pastor Mike. If you have an area code for your phone, please let us know your area code in the chat so I can bring you right in. Okay. All right. We're gonna see if we can find Pastor Mike. 770 area code. I don't know if this is he. Yes, hello. 770 with your hand raised. Hello? Oh, is this Pastor Mike? Okay, I'm going to go back to 770. Let's go to uh, 315. Hello. Hey, slow, Elder. Okay, this is not Pastor Mike, right? Uh, no, sir. Okay, hold tight. I'm, I'm going to take one other and see if he's on. If not, then I'll bring you in. 
302 area code. Is this Pastor Mike? Shalom, Elder. No, this is not Pastor Mike. Fortunately. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to bring you back. Hey, I've I seen the hands raised. So I'm going to try one more. If not, then we're just going to go down the line and let you all say what you have to say. I wanted to give the pastors an opportunity. Uh, 757 area code. You're live. So, shalom, Ender. Um, I'm I'm not a pastor, but um, uh, or I'm not Pastor Mike, but okay, you if, got. Uh, I had a, you, you have one minute. Expound whatever you would like. Okay. Um. So, pertaining to the topic about uh, Christianity is alive. Do me um, a favor. I do want to. Do me a favor. Cut off the stream in the back so I can hear. Okay. Please. When yeah, I bring the call in, please. Um, Y'all have to cut off the, uh, you have to cut me off in the background. It's, it makes for bad, uh, broadcasting. Come on. Uh, yes, yeah, Adder. So as far as me coming into, um, uh, in tune with Jesus Christ or, uh, Yeshaya. Yeah. Um, I was raised from a, a Baptist church, um, through a, a friend of mine. Her mother was a, a minister. Um, and every Sunday, you know, we, we would go, uh, but she ended up giving me a, a, a Holy Bible. And since I've been following you guys, I of course been using it as a, as a tool. But one thing I, I can reflect back on as far as my time, uh, going to churches. Yeah. They, they really don't expound as far as, uh, the verses or the precepts that they, they do speak about doing their sermons. Um, they they really don't speak about as far as the spirituality realm. Um, they mostly focus on, I guess, monitoring it, 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 as far as their day-to-day -day living, so to speak. Uh, so to kind of um, put it all in a nutshell, uh, Christianity, it is, well, Christianity and... Um, like other religious institutes, there are, uh, they're, they're like how uh, Elder Lawyer had mentioned once before in one of his prior videos or prior uh, podcasts, as far as um, speaking about how religion, it brings good and evil instead of uh, the truth. And it's so crazy because it's like I, I had the Bible for so long, for many years now, but as far as how I was going about it, it was of good and evil, not of the truth. Um, so with that, um, just want to say thank you to you and all the other elders as far as being able to expound um, on a deeper concept and okay. of the correct concept uh, towards the truth. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, my brother. Thanks for calling. Uh, six one. Four area code. Shalom. Uh, six one four area code. You're live. Okay, we're digress. We're digressing into digression here. Uh, sunshine. You got one minute. Shoot. Oh, hi, hi, Elder. Hi. Let's Hello, go. Hello, hi. Oh, okay, bless you, Elder. You think okay, you, you okay. think you can wrap this up in one minute? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, elders, um, just a, a lot of them. What the callers were saying just um hit home with me. I remember when I was nine, I would always have like Cesar Borgia whirling in my head, and then I would have dreams of like Cesar Borgia. But every time I did, it was always very scary. And then one time I had a dream of a black man with an afro, and I was calm in the dream when I was okay. nine. I remember that. And, but but, but <laughs> I just wanted to say that everything from the times past to now is revealed and all is 
seen directly, you know, the, the, it's all lining up with the prophecies of the Bible to such a degree that those who would say brave words and denying the living word are now often offended or no longer as bold to speak, but they now whisper the poisons like someone else was mentioning, and, or they'll just, enjoy, just ignore the truth of the word and just be conceited because they don't want to face the actions that are leading to the impending judgment that's prophesied. And meanwhile, they also absolve themselves by spouting lies and exposing the truth in, in the lesser magic like you've spoken about. And, and um, we just um, would study to show ourselves approved. Otherwise, um, our, they'll feel that our destruction is our fault and the blood is off of their hands. And so uh, Christ said, like you said, many shall come and then deceive many. And uh, those who follow Christ in sincerity, you know, according to the word, it, they know the difference between him and what he's saying and Christendom and, and, and what is accepted in this worldwide um, acceptance today. And by grace, our eyes are open and the scriptures are clearer and clearer because we have the armor you know, of, of the Most High, you know, studying the word. So that replacement theology of Christendom is against the lost sheep, the promised seed, which is Israel, which who we are, and it can no longer stick okay. because the peddling of doctrines is showing the nakedness. Oh, oh, and, and that nakedness is an operation of the double tongue, which is just that yay, nay, hot, cold, everything goes. And, and, it, and, it, and it's certainly evident, you know. Five. And so I, I, I just want to say that the trickeries of the past are not holding up anymore, and all the false doctrines are not holding up anymore in the routines that, uh, that the deceiver, deceivers are constantly peddling and, uh, into our home. And by by grace of the Most High, you know, through through what we're receiving from Ahia, those who are interested in being the meek to inherit the kingdom, and, and through baptism, these are the ones who are continually opening up to study and to strengthen, regardless of the confusion of the masses. Exactly. And, <laughs> we, we, we got, we're about I, I got to go to the next call, Chunchai. Oh, praise the Most High. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> All right. Bless you. Uh, we're gonna try. We're gonna try one, oh, sh one shot in the dark. Very good. She always come with copious notes, and it's well appreciated. So she been waiting so long. There's no way I'm gonna ignore her. You know, and, and not allow her to. You know, because she really take good notes, and <laughs> and she's able to quantify the whole broadcast. But I'm sorry, we had 11 o'clock here almost. Uh, two five two area code, and I'm glad Sunshine is on our side. 252 area code. I, I hope this is Pastor Mike. Is this Pastor Mike? There is no 225 waiting. There is no 225 waiting in the queue. Okay. With that, I'm going to end the blog talk real quick. And Pastor Mike. This is what I'll do. This is what I'll do for Pastor Mike. Because I know you're out there. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Elder Lawyer, what I'll do is I'll open up the 215-253-4448 number strictly for Pastor Mike. All right. Let me hang up with you. I'll get you on the other line, Elder, Go Elder Lawyer, all right? That really concludes the broadcast for this evening. It's been a great broadcast as a prelude to our Hebrew and, Pre Hebrew and Bible Academy this coming Sunday. Hope you're there with Creation of the Universe where I go into detail on how everything is created, how it was created, and our seniors in creation. How was all we see made in our Hebrew and Bible Academy this Sunday. I hope to see you there for the first week. Rear in to go with your Bibles. Okay. Now, Mike, not, not Mike. What's his name? Pastor Mike. I've just opened up the line. Two, one, five, two, five, three, four, 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 eight. It's open specifically for you. No one else. Come on in, Pastor Mike, the Christian. 
A matter of fact, let me put the number Here's the number, Mike. Pastor Mike, excuse me. Respectfully. You can call. I'll give it all but one minute. Okay. Pastor Mike, don't forget the title of this in conclusion, Crisis, Truth, Christianity, the Institution is a Lie. I'm still looking here, waiting. All right, well, uh, I guess that's that. Hopefully you can call in next week. That concludes our broadcast. You're here with the Gathered of Christ Church. I hope you all will stay here with us for the Sabbath going into our Hebrew and Bible Academy. The official Sabbath calendar is done right now, and you can order your calendar officially. Officially, it's done. You can order your calendar, which breaks down the true holy days at Gathering of Christ. Dot org. We thank you. We thank the Almighty Ahaya Asha Ahaya Bahashim Yashaya Wabrawak for the Holy Spirit and the truth that have been expounded tonight on this broadcast. We thank the Most High for you all. Stay prayed up, sin not, and pass the mic since you're there. Understand that the Most High is calling back Israel. Shalom. The East is where we're from. The twelve tribes of Israel. In seven twenty one BC. The Assyrian king, he took us down, we fell. <laughs> With the great escape, we went through the Euphrates. The Lord held the water still. To a land where no mankind dwelt, we went. The twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be. Manasseh. The Cubans, Ephraim, from Puerto Rico, and Bali from the Isles of Hawaii. The Lord is calling back his right yeah. Zebulon, from Panama, Cat, the North American Indians, Simeon, the Dominicans. The highest gathering is Israel. The Arabs and Africans told us. At gunpoint. Together our wives and children then sold us In the belly of these great ships we traveled in fear By the rivers of Babylon we found our brothers here A high gatherer Asher in Colombia oh. Reuben from Australia Issachar the Mexicans A high gatherer
myself The Cubans Eat from from Puerto Rico The Bali from the arms of Hawaii The Lord is calling back his right yeah. Sandula from Panama Yeah, the North American Indians Simeon, the Dominicans Our highest gathering 